Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone Welcome to tonight's final episode on Let's Talk with Aima We've, for the past two nights Over this festive period Been discussing a very pertinent, important uh, Subject and topic uh, On the podcast with myself uh, In relation to marriage Pre-marriage, uh, within marriage uh, and everything related to that. We've spoke on various different aspects, very various different parts of marriage, from uh, finding, searching, looking for a spouse, up until um, marital, marital issues. Um, we've looked at uh, aspects of, uh, from the Quran and the Sunnah, we've looked at marriage from the perspective of those who uh, are looking to get married, those who are seeking marriage, um, what the Quran and Sunnah says in that regards. And we've also looked at some personal accounts from those who have been uh, on board, those who have joined us, um, Imam Adil and Didi and Simba as well on the first episode uh, we've done. Before we kick off, proceedings for the final part in which we've got some interesting discussions lined up in relation to marriage uh, and well into marriage um, please subscribe please share this podcast uh, let everyone within your families know about it go share it on your whatsapp stories that share it in the groups that you are part of share it on your snapchats on your social medias on instagram uh, put it up on your stories and, you know, let people know. Let people know what's happening and that we've got this uh, really enjoyable, interesting, educational podcast which uh, Aima uh, has set up and is doing and be a part of that. And that's something very important that we need to um, get involved in and take part of. And I think with yourselves uh, who have been watching, I think many of you have benefited it's been insightful and educational and it's also been a good laugh. Um, uh, being able to witness uh, Imam Adil's humor, for example, uh, and the banter between us and um, the between myself, my brothers, uh, with Soldier Was as well, who's been a, a huge part of this. And we've actually decided that next week will be the final episode and this would be a, a wrap for season one. And the best way to wrap it is let's uh, talk about the year 2020 uh, and speak about that and that's what we're going to do so next week around possibly on Wednesday Thursday or even Friday we will have uh, the final episode and then I'll take a, a break for about a week or two uh, before we resume uh, in some some time in at the beginning of next year with relation to uh, season two and we're also hoping to get these podcasts these episodes onto uh, Apple Podcasts, that platform, on Spotify as well. Those of you who have these um, uh, music apps or sound apps, then inshallah they'll be available on there as well. And we're hoping that you guys will subscribe on there, help and benefit. Uh, we'll be starting sponsorships as well. Those of you who are uh, in the business industry and would like to sponsor uh, on the Let's Talk with I'm a podcast, uh, can contact myself uh, via social media or uh, one of the team and we can discuss then uh, and mention to you and put forward the packages available. Nevertheless, um, we're hoping that everyone's thoroughly enjoyed uh, the, the podcast, podcast, the podcast in, <laughs> in every way and I think uh, Imam Adil's already uh, got the giggles. Uh, yesterday we started really well with the giggles to be honest with you. Uh, but this is something between me and Imam Adil. We've always uh, uh, giggled our way through life, if I can say that. Well, um, oh, I don't know. If well, I think you're on. Am I on? Is he on? Am I on? Get him on. Oh, he's on. Well, that, hey, look at that. That's not always been the case. It's uh, what? it's only really recently developed. But the giggles. This uh, mutual giggle. uh, love and affection and the well, giggles. Well, I didn't hate you. No, I, I don't think any brother hates the, uh, or younger brother hates the elder brother. Uh, but I think uh, when we were a lot younger, 
our relationship was very different. Well, uh, I think up until well, if I was to analyze it, and if you're it's cool very with me Tom and Jerry. It, yeah, from up yeah. until the age of sixteen, it's always been. He's my elder brother, and you know why does he get away with it? And I'm always in trouble, or I'm putting him in trouble with breaking stuff in the house, or mm. you know, because there's only a year apart between me and Imam Adil. Funnily enough, you'd be surprised. He looks about 45, but he's actually 31. Uh, he's going to be 32 next month, and I'm going to be 31 in February. Mm. So there's there's just a year apart, a year, uh, a month, a month, a week. a week, and and a day between us, uh, to be precise. But then I think from 16 up until like. Maybe twenty two, twenty three. Uh, maybe even like till till Al Hikam. You know, I've sort of been away, mm. being in Jamia, being in London, being in Manchester, and me sort of like carrying on with my sort of career per se, or my 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 lifestyle or my work, and just carrying on with that. And you, sort of taking the burden of the house along with dad, mm. and then. You know, going into studying and then you branching off into London, having your work experience and experience out down south and then coming back. And then, you know, how how we sort of then came into one one area of, well, why we work in everywhere when we can get our own place. Mm. We can sit in one area and we can get people to come to us and we can help our local community give back to our community who who's helped us where we've grown up, that being Bradford. No, I think, uh, and then that's when uh, we sort I, of... I think that the Al-Hikam definitely uh, helped us in our personal relationship. Uh, yeah. That, that distance that grew between us. Uh, whilst well, we it wasn't a... It's not a deliberate distance. That's what I want to sort of mm. mention. It's just... It so happened that I was doing carrying on, you know, living mm. in another part of the country for most part of my time in Jamia, three years, and then... In London, I mean, I can't really remember any real memories with Imam Adil from the age of 16 till... I think at the time in know, London, there was that connection. Uh, obviously, when you, by chance, went through, uh, obviously, your first marriage, I think there was a lot of involvement at that time. Uh, with, yeah, with, well, whenever I've got in trouble, you've always got, in tr uh, yeah. got involved, really. But where it's been all right, you know. I was just going to say, whenever you, you got into trouble, we've got into trouble. But uh, obviously, that's. And whenever thing. you've got yeah. stuck, you know, I've obviously uh, yeah been. Yeah. Uh, day you said this, I, I've never heard you say it, but the truth is, huh? we've um, you know well, assisted and helped in. Yeah. Maybe not in. Maybe your personal life is not as uh, broadcasted or public as my personal life, mm. and. You know, but any public figures tainted in whatever way, shape, or form. Yeah, be you're, that positive you're not going to please everyone. You're not going to. Not as impossible. a public figure. It's, it's impossible. You're not going to. We're going we're gonna to have. I don't know how many people. We got 148 people self watching. Yeah. Not everyone's our fan. No. And you know, Pizza have taught us this. When I was in Jamia, certainly he said you're going to have 100 people in the room. 10 will always be against you, or not be on your favor, or agree with what you say. But that's part of growing up. You're going to mm. have that. And we've learned that with whatever we've gone through in life and stuff. And and then just just in terms of uh, between us, I mean, people are getting an insight into how me and Imam Adil are. I think, uh, in, you know, since 2015, having Jamil Karim, uh, not Jamil Karim, uh, sorry, Al Hikam Institute. Mm. And then, um, you know, having that, that sort of relationship growing, having Al Hikam between us, and then sort of you giving the sort of role of being the head teacher of the institute, the madrasa, and that side of it where you directly have to manage 300 to 350 and at times even 400 kids were your direct responsibility. You had to deal with that. And that was thrusted on your head. And I said, that's your, your headache and you're going to mm. deal with it. Where it comes to all the bureaucracy side of it and the other side i'll deal with that no worry about any of that which has always worked hand in hand and where it concerns the masjid side whether it's moving the masjid forward and stuff and like this we've just sort of grown back into how uh, the days of tom and jerry were mm, merged quite well and now you know and i'll be honest with you we've had people along the way try to split us and cause uh, wedges between me and Imam and Adil. And your heads have been turned. Sometimes. And heads have been turned and people have, you know, and I'll tell you straight, for me, 
after my mum is, is my brothers and you know it's uh, don't don't be shedding your this is not a watermark moment um and uh, joining us from the dead <laughs> literally. literally he was asleep and he's just woke up and walked down and navigates uh, you know he's gonna have his own little uh, shoot off uh, podcast and this oh that he God, better not true. be turning up late to that i'll tell you now you're gonna yeah. say that well, I'd rather say him. here. I was talking to him. Nevertheless, he was talking to him, so we will uh, let it be. Though, um, you know, we've got our first Before we proceed, well. he promised me nuts. Uh, he put it in the group earlier. So I'm hoping there's some. Well, nuts. I don't think he made an offer of getting some. He just asked, would he like something? Well, the, he, he didn't follow through. I don't think. Do you want some munchies because you were eating a bit on the camera? I thought it was obviously. Uh, casual. Yeah, yeah, it is casual, yeah. but you were just munching a bit, no? So you've not bought any nuts? I just told you how to navigate storm better. Mary, Mary, then I'm just very here. I'm drenched. Cholo, let's make what, it. We at home? Yeah. Oh, right, right. I thought you was uh, here. Is, that's what everyone thinks about me. Now. I go to my bedroom and I no, say, no, no, he's, 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 he's spending less time now in there. Well, sleep is the sister of death, as they say. No, I was watching mm-hmm. Chelsea with Arsenal. Or oh, is it Al Moutu Akhul No, Al Nomu Akhul Mout. Mm. Must be. Yeah. Sleep is the brother of death. Mm. And Nomu Akhul Maut. And you know, when we said he's returned back from the dead, we're saying he's woke up. Alhamdulillah, Ladi Ahyani, Ba'adama Amatani wa ilayhi nushur. Which is the dua when you wake up. All praise is due to the Almighty for giving me life after, after death. And you know, he didn't die, but they said the nearest experience to death is sleep. Sleep and. You know what, I tell you, I, I really can't wait to have uh, a podcast on death. Mm-hmm. I think that would be one of the best topics to speak to the youngsters and to educate them about a podcast. Nevertheless, we were just uh, have a sub to fill you in, talking about mine and uh, Imam Adil's uh, relationship yeah, over yeah. the years, how mm-hmm. it's developed and how we are here now. And, you know, we mentioned it to mum and mum goes, you know, make sure you all sit apart and, you know, <laughs> freely enough, I don't know how. How they thought that, you know, people just don't know how the podcast setting is. But she goes, dur dur the gatena Not knowing that we have to sit together. But uh, may Allah protect us all from Ameen. the evil eye. Ameen. You know, jealousy is real. Jealousy exists. It's a disease. It's an illness. And the Quran has many an example of jealousy between brothers, Abil and Kabil. Uh, between Sayyidina Yusuf. Well, Sayyidina Yusuf wasn't jealous, certainly. But the brothers against Sayyidina Yusuf, alayhi salam. Mm. And, and these are examples where jealousy has been... Uh, and, and the devil against, uh, you know, uh, Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. And, you know, I just wanted to mention a point. You know, we, we actually had a discussion on racism and I, I didn't mention... Actually, the first ever racist was the devil himself. He was, he was discriminative against Sayyiduna Adam, wasn't he? When he said, when Allah says, well, why didn't you bow down to him? Hmm. And, and he says, Ana khayru minhu. You know, I'm, I'm better than him. So all of a sudden, this superiority complex, you know, has been from day dot. Since Allah created Sayyidina Adam, the devil thought he was superior. And he who thinks he's superior, arrogance, is an illness and disease. And we'll talk about the illnesses of the heart. And we'll talk about these. And Imam Adil will be, you know, one of the best to speak with because well, we're of actually, the and spirituality. We're actually looking for someone who can come forward and, and be your host. I, I don't know if it's uh, uh, my place to put it out there. Go on, pitch it. Uh, but uh, certainly, yeah, I think there is a plan for 2021 for us to all branch off into our own little podcasts uh, on the same platform, be that Al Hikam uh, Media YouTube channel or Let's Talk With Aima podcast uh, YouTube channel. Mm. Uh, Sub's got his own uh, ideas and we support him in that. Um, so... I think there is a, a need for some religious podcasts. There are some out there. They're doing a good job, uh, and Allah Almighty grant them, uh, you know, blessings in what they are doing. Uh, but uh, if anyone who is watching uh, and listening, any brother who is a brother, of course, uh, well spoken, uh, well spoken, can host, manage, and and you know, who, who can who's good on the religious mic. Uh, podcast, yeah, as in yeah, yeah. the topics and the discussions will be. Um, you know, it's not a speech type. I mean, I'm, I'm adapting, I'm learning. I think ye- yesterday was one extreme too far. And no, no, I don't think the second episode was uh, in all honesty. Extreme. I don't think it is, and I just think that did, what, we're did receive, out for, yeah. what we're setting out for, what we're setting out for, the objective or 
of this platform of let's talk with Aima is deen and dunya. Mm. It is a bit of banter and religion. It is a bit of education and a bit of banter. A bit of, you know, it's a bit of everything. It's an insight into me, you, whoever comes on here. You know, I've got special guests lined up for the next season, for example. And, you know, it's an insight into them and, and, and to see how they are and that. So mm. it's not, it's just obviously where your persona and demeanor as a religious figure, as an imam, seeing you in that light, you know, more, it would suit where it's a, just a specific religious podcast. Yeah. But you don't want to be boring. Podcasts have to be some entertaining. I don't watch podcasts. I'll be straight with you. All I know is that. Well, for we you, a podcast. podcast is a podcast. This is before you walked in, by the way. A podcast. Yeah, yeah slip, slip of the tongue. But but anyway, right. it's uh, it's one of them things. And we've already had one brother put his name forward. <laughs> I don't think he lives close enough, though. A but man from it. Middlesbrough. <laughs> The less said, the better, I think. It's a religious podcast. I don't, I don't know if he ticks that box. But, uh, Chalo, we'll add his name to the so shortlist. Just, uh, did you spend some part of your life in Barking East London Mosque? Yes, I spent three years of my life mm. permanently in, in Barking East London. I've got some very fond memories and a lot of good friends out there. Um, it was a good time and I actually loved Barking. I thought, I wish if I could go back, you know, I wouldn't actually mind going back to... I think work needs to be done in London. Especially mm. for the Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. You know, there's a huge scope. You know, this podcast in London would be double, triple. Because it's the capital and stuff like that. But, you know, and the work we're doing as well. But, you know, alhamdulillah, we're, we're content where we are. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, things are okay. Um, remind me before I end today's podcast to give you results of the poll I put up on Instagram. Yeah, I noticed that you're only sharing uh, the no, answers. No, no, I'm gonna. But well, I'm gonna share it now in public in front of everyone, and I'm gonna put it up afterwards. Don't yeah. worry, I'm not gonna. It doesn't really. I'm not gonna nick your limelight. Anyway. I'm not interested in nicking your limelight. People and think I'm not really interested in the results. To be honest, you're not gonna do no, any well, sleep over yeah. it. Mm, no. Keep them decent. Yeah, yeah, because we know why you've mentioned it. Because clearly you've got sixty percent or more. Or no, 70% I'm gonna mention more. it because. You know, all Didi's friends have uh, gone and oh, uh, voted Didi. Did and uh, all your followers have said uh, Imam Adil. And I yeah, all much our true. followers are on yeah. his platform. And mine, I don't have nothing. I'll tell you straight out. Yeah, but the, the, the answers but that you were sharing throughout yeah, the just, day. All right, that, that was different. I'm, I mean, I'm going to share the real. You weren't being very uh, unbiased. There was that many, that many that come through. I thought, where shall I start? Mashallah. But well, I just want to make another point. A, a lot of people though. think I'm... Like fame, hungry, or yeah, I could yeah. not care less whether there's a thousand watching or a hundred. I've had, I've seen the peak of it, yeah, and I've seen the lowest of the low where there's nobody. So, Im, I am not driven by fame or hungry. I'm just driven and motivated to help, inspire, to educate, and even if it's one person, back to my people. That's it. Even if it's that's one all person. that drives me. Mm. Not nothing else. I mean, I'm not here for plaudits and. Whether people say I'm the best podcaster or you are, I'm not bothered. To be honest with you, you know, Imam Adil has so much scope and potential to be a no, really good I, podcaster. I and I he's don't. doing really well. Yeah. And, you know, people have actually, full enough said, Didi is actually really good. People have actually said Didi is a, know, you know, yeah. dark horse and that. He's, he's you, underrated. I'm One guy goes, he's, next year. At the moment, he's seriously he's underrated. He's soaked with Pachuara eyes. Well, right. your missus should adopt you off. Oh, yes. <laughs> She's asleep. Probably, she's asleep as well. She's asleep. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he must have woke up and thought, oh, there's a podcast. Yeah. We should have rang in it. You know, we got your men sat here, man. Sure. 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 Yeah. When I woke up, woke up at quarter past nine, yeah, and I just, knowing what he's like, mm. wait, you're there and everything, how do you get up? <laughs> I don't know. It's like that Mr. Bean episode. I know Isa's watching. So that Mr. Bean episode when he, he wakes up uh, late for the appointment at the dentist's. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you've uh, watched uh, Isa's always into Mr. Bean. Isa loves uh, Mr. Bean. Uh, so, and then obviously he's he's changing his clothes. His clothes while he's there. driving. A bit practically, is a bit like that. Yeah, yeah, so I think that was a One bit of those of ones, yeah. yeah nice right. socks, though. They're not Aimas. <laughs> oh, man, today we had... Very, uh, very colourful. We had like a... a you socks UN on? meeting Hello. at home. Where it was just, uh, you know, socks. And don't you dare call me what you no, no, what's on your mind. No, is that I why mom rang me then? No, no, they were ringing anyway. Achha. I think that it was your turn to get you in. But the, the, the meeting had ended and adjourned by then, but I 
I have stamped my authority and I had to put as my foot do. down. As no, no, do. it's not. I'm not bothered about anything but socks. Yeah. I've got this fixation with socks. Phobia. I, I've got to have my socks. Every second day, I change my socks. Mm. So, you know, and I buy pairs of socks every six months. Well, I change mine every day, so. Why is this a competition? It's not every second day, but. Uh, do you really want me to elaborate on. Uh, <laughs> Let's not go into the uh, no, go into underwear Instagram. department. <laughs> not underwear, feet, man. We're on about feet, for God's sake. Oh, you're back, yeah. yeah. Please, Imam Adil. I think you're too relaxed. Uh-huh. We prefer you when you're in your speech mode. Please, just mm. like, you know. Uh, anyway. Can't anyway, but I, I was waiting for my notes, man. I was really looking forward to him. My mother could go down the road if you want. Uh, yeah, go get him a pair, will you? No, I uh, yeah. <laughs> what a joke. That was in my head all the way through. I'm too scared to say from the both of you. No, no but you so you're going to shout at me afterwards? Peanuts. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about peanuts as well. I'll go get him if you want him. No, no, it doesn't matter. Why, well, hey, man? Sure, man. Uh, yeah, at six o'clock. No, 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 uh, guys, if you like that joke, please, please send in the laughing emojis. That joke was a great one. Mm-hmm. It was, it was, it was quite funny, no? I don't think it was. Family planning. Can we get on with the topic well, tonight? It's quite relevant. Family, pl- family. I don't really want to be here all night. Yeah, true. Uh, so let's, let's, start, tonight, let's start. So. Let's start. Uh, <laughs> let's. <laughs> guys, share the podcast. <laughs> get people on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> get, uh, get. Uh, he had a good uh, podcast yesterday. I think his missus is very happy with him. So he's been promised. Uh, she was actually saying ice stone gelatos, no, guys. No. Heavenly desserts. Heavenly desserts. Uh, sorry. Uh, she was actually saying I was quite giddy. And uh, quite a few people messaged me saying, "Imam, so we've never seen you in that light before." You know, I'll tell you now, Imam Adil is one of the funniest guys. No, I wouldn't say funniest. if you if you this guy's humor is no, actually no no no. It is, it is top-rate humour. I actually like my mother's humour because, you know, it's... People, I think, misunderstand us by... Or should I say misunderstand me because they only see me Perception. on the stage. Yeah, yeah. Perception. Like somebody comes after Juman and says, oh, your speeches are fantastic, but your your delivery or your lehja, the way that you come across, Style. it's a bit uh, hardcore. And some people Militant. obviously have said, Alama Khadim Hussain Rizvi, Rahmatullah of the UK, and that kind of... Quite militant in you your know, approach and, and, and you don't mix honest, your words. I find it quite upsetting because off stage or when I'm not on the member or not doing, I mean, in class is different, but when you're on, uh, you know, better than anyone, when you're doing a stage, it's a different and sometimes the emotions get the better of you. Let me, let me word that. You're in your professional, yeah. in, in your professional attire, you're in your professional, but you but don't have to But it's the sunnah of the, the Prophet time, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No, but it's the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. al Tirmizi Sharif ki rivayat hai. That when Nabi Islam would deliver bayanat, they would be very firm, very stern, and they would obviously get the uh, message across to the Sahaba Karam. So it's all about approach. You know, it might not be everyone's cup of tea. But I it, must I, even I wouldn't I've say. Used that I word. wouldn't say my defense. Uh, those who know me, Mashallah, so Hills just messaged me from Preston, a very good close friend of mine. We've been Umrah a few times. Uh, brothers from Bolton are watching Asad, for example. Yeah, we need to uh, get him on, actually. You know, Asad, uh, guys, if there's any sisters out there, I might as well pitch it in oh, for him. Yeah, you yeah. know, he's, he's a close friend, brother. He's always helped us yeah. financially in every way. You know, he's top bull geezer and that, right? <laughs> bull geezer. Mebs and these guys. You know, uh, good, good brothers, man. They're genuine, top, sincere Genuine. And, you know, we've got a lot of very good friends in that sense. Alhamdulillah. You know, you all we be, had you the Qureshis on the apples. phone just before we yeah, came yeah, on. Yeah, you know... Uh, Ajikas Some more of our picture of himself today as a gift. Ajikas, I don't know if he watches it, but I'm, I'm sure Aisha and the family and mm. you know Suli and uh, Abdullah watched the you podcast. Know, we're, we're very blessed that up, up and down the country, good friends. Uh, we've got a very very good uh, talakat and links and friends uh, and and you know a network of people who we can uh, you know rely on and, and we trust in and they are loyal. I think that's always important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through difficult uh, times, these guys have been with us, man, and. Respect to my friends. Allah bless each and every one of them. Uh, but yeah, Asad's a 40-year-old. Uh, coming close to 40, yes. Yes, coming close to 40 years old. He's not married. He's, mashallah, wealthy businessman. He's got his own company set up, etc. Doing really well. Not that that should be a priority, but yes, he's set. Um, looking for marriage. Please, guys, if, if you are. It's not marriage bureau. I'm not here to do anything. but Because he's, he's actually genuinely a good brother. And <coughs> You know, his, his mum passed away. May Allah grant her a high place in general for those. Amin. Great woman. Never actually met her. Imam Adil, I think, met him. Um, once or twice. Once or twice. Uh, father's still alive. And obviously, you know, every parent wants to see their, their kids happy and married and settled and 
starting families. This is part of life. Uh, this is life. And, uh, you know, we pray for him and, and anyone else who's out there struggling uh, to get married. And, and, and importantly, we let's, uh, that, that moves us on to um, some interesting discussions tonight. Guys, we've got uh, an agenda that we need to um, look into. Part three, um, we've discussed quite a few things. Didi's been on it on both episodes. You joined us last night, Imam Adil, for the, for the marriage podcast. We had Simber on before. Soldier couldn't make it. He's in Pakistan at the moment. You know, wish him well out there. Um, we've discussed a lot. Yep. And I want to start again with this disclaimer. Whatever is discussed in relation to marriage on this podcast, it is very circumstantial in the sense that of what aspect we speak from. Where I'm talking from my personal experiences, Afasab his, Didi's his, and others' days. You know, I, I, I want to just make something clear. You are in your own situation right now, in your own marriage. You got married in your own circumstances. There are the typical scenarios that people get married in. But this podcast is not specific to any one specific scenario. It's just a general conversation podcasting on this topic where we talk about different scenarios and circumstances somebody actually messaged you know uh, in regards to some of the difficulties and i want i, I want to talk about this and i want imam adil's input because you know imam adil's got um a lot of experience knowledge wisdom behind him you know over the time and somebody asked, asked me to touch on those who are struggling to get married our parents are delaying for their personal reasons such hmm. as uh, not respecting or listening to the children's choice and what measures those people should take and what are their rights when it comes to their parents. Like, people, there's people, girls out there who want to get married, guys that want to get married, but parents are not allowing them to get married. Hmm. And there's a lot of sisters and brothers out there who are in, the, in that. I'm not going to lie to you, in the last two nights, I've had people inbox me with problems, scenarios, you know, someone as young as 17, 18, 19 being forced, blackmailed to marry, you know, the uncle's son. Father still is understanding, but no. Another forced to be, go to Pakistan and marry someone from the village or someone from the city. I'm not going to mention nobody's names. We can't date a protection, but scenarios. These are situations people are finding themselves in right now. A brother with a disability can't hear, you know, good heart he's got nice genuine good lad people are saying no to him thinking that he can't be good to him or kind to him there's so many scenarios like this people are suffering out there what what do you say what advice do you give to someone who's in that position i think first and foremost we've got to make it clear like you did i think in the first episode islam categorically condemns false marriages yeah and i think that goes without saying um then again, you know, the discussion is linked with what we touched upon yesterday. Uh, this age-all argument of uh, culture versus religion. religion. And we find that unfortunately, uh, some parents are still uh, stuck in the uh, olden times. And uh, they've got this backward mentality to an extent. And... To be honest, they're not really worried about uh, their own children's future, but rather their own izzat and honor, which is uh, mind-baffling. And it's quite worrying, to be honest. Obviously, I've got two daughters. Uh, everything we do now is, is for our daughters. Uh, everything that, uh, you know, if you're a parent, and those of you who are watching, whatever you do and you've got children, it's always for the children. Uh, you know, you put them first. But some people are selfish. Can we say that? Yeah. Uh, some people are selfish. But or can parents be selfish? If it's selfish in the sense that they want what's best for their children, they know that it's going to be uh, good for their children, and they want to really push that home, which sometimes children are blinded to. Parents can have that foresight. Uh, and they see something which is good for the child. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll push that through. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm a an outcome of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. No, you know, that's we, actually well said, man. We touched upon this right. briefly yesterday. Yeah. 
I was. Your parents wanted best for you. They wanted what's best for me. I thought maybe a different route. I didn't want to go down the family route. More of a you know somebody who's more suited towards my um, you know religious profession religious, or profession. Uh, yeah, sense. yeah. And everyone has their own zok and sh- but parents see something uh, for their children which children don't see for themselves. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and you know that that type of selfishness. Uh, is perfectly fine on parts of, on the part of the parents, yeah. but certainly when it comes to uh, selfishness on on the other uh, you know side of the spectrum, then it's it's really well, really when disheartening. Are thinking you're gonna do this because I'm gonna keep my brother happy and yeah. my sister happy, but they don't care about their, their kids. That's wrong. Or they know that they and we're gonna come to this in more detail. That the daughter is being violently abused by her husband, her, uh, yani the father's brother's son, yani the chacha's son, whatever you want to call it, or mama's son. Or taya's son, or yeah. Father knows this, but he won't do anything. He won't say anything. He won't take any action. Why? Apna nak bachane vaste. Apni izzat bachane vaste. Yeah, but would you say the izzat gets more kharab afterwards? Of course. So but if it wouldn't work out. It's more basically, but they don't in really. In this country, the women have so many rights. All they have to do is pick up the phone. They just have to accuse. We know now. scenarios. They only have to accuse uh, and and An say alleged. and make the accusation that he's raped me or he's hit me. Mm. And in this country, they don't ask you twice. They sometimes, you know, without any evidence. You know, just generalizing here, not yeah, looking at any not specific specifically, oh yeah. uh, cases here, just without any evidence. Though the law, law of the land is that they do obviously they will have to substantiate it. their claim with proof and evidence. That goes without saying. But what I'm trying to say is sometimes... Women have a lot of rights here. The accusation 15 years ago or the, the incident was made 15... It did happen 15 years ago. I'm sorry if I'm going to muddle a few of my words. I'm a bit tired today. But uh, the incident happened 15 years ago. Man raped the woman. Uh, and 15 years later, she's making the accusation. We've got a case that we're aware of within the family, extended extended family. Yeah, I won't mention the names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or again, uh, you know, even where the area is because people put two and two together nowadays and they get no, but, five. But, uh, another point to mention here and is like this, what these taxi drivers, you yeah. know, without stereotyping, what's happening in places like Rochdale, in Rodrem, grooming. Rodrem cleaning, this grooming. Yeah. And how cases have come up from the past. You know, and we condemn that, man. That's bang out of order. No, but what I'm trying to say is that and it's haram. The fact is that it's the, the cases stick in this country. That's you know, the point you're making, yeah. He, uh, what he's trying to have Sab said is that So why don't the parents then support their daughter, support their son, which makes sense, rather than going against them, and then they're going to go down that route anyway, mm. and it's going to be in the papers, and it's going to be yeah, on everyone's what you call point is yeah. They already know it's going to go down that route anyway from mm. the talking. Mm. So like, we know the way this is going to end. We've seen it a million times over the last 50 years. The parents have as well with the kids. And worst case scenario, a couple of years ago, here in Bradford, again, you know, Batore Ishara, it, it actually led to that woman, that that sister being killed. Yeah, yeah, there was, there's been honor killings. You know? Honor killings have occurred in that. On our doorstep, people who we know very well, places where we eat regularly. You get me? Yeah, but there, there are honor killings out there and, and you know, um, it's, it's, it's unfortunate and sad. It's unfortunate and sad that what's happening out there and, and they've got no voice. Mm-hmm. You know, they're silenced. They've got to live in silence and, and they don't deserve that, man. Tomorrow, we love daughters and we, love, we, and we don't have no sister, but we, we, you know, those who have sisters, why, why would you do that, man? This is not the world we live in. And it's bang out of order. It's not acceptable. And and where your parents are wrong, people are scared to say where your parents are wrong. Yes. Because we've always said parents are right. Islam has given parents that, that right and that status. We're not saying a parent can be wrong, yet still have that status. Hmm. They still have that status, your mother or your father. Isn't this what in, in the Quran? Sina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas came, complained to Rasulullah about Salam their mother Allah. who's a mushrika. And Nabi alayhi salatu salam said, you still be good to her. Even if your mother's a mushrika, be good to your mother because that's a status. Mm. That status Allah has given her that you have to still respect and honor her. But where she's wrong, 
But justice is justice. The Prophet ﷺ said, if my daughter Fatima radiallahu anha, oh, oh, oh. if my daughter say the Fatima, she was to steal, then I would cut her hand off. Mm. What does that mean? So the Fatima is never going to steal. She's pure. You know, she's Al-Batul radiallahu anha. She's Al-Zahra radiallahu anha. She's Ummul Hassan wal Hussein radiallahu anha. She's Zawja Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhuma. Mm. Nabi is saying that if I have to apply the law to even my own daughter, then it will be applied. Sharia Sharia is the Sharia. So Mm. where your parents are doing something against the Sharia, then then it's bang out of order. It's not acceptable. It's not good. And we've got to we've got to speak out against that. Daughters who are not being allowed to marry for their parents' selfish, un Islamic reasons, that is wrong. Sons as well. That is wrong. The same goes with sons. But then there's the other aspect of it, because obviously just throwing it out there, you know, sometimes they know that their son's up to no good. He's involved in drugs, yeah? Or he's involved in, uh, you know, maybe an illicit relationship, or he's getting up to no good. And sadly and unfortunately, they think the solution is, that marriage is the solution to a lot of the problems. Yeah. yeah but yeah. it's not fair that, they're going to marry him off to a sister and destroy her life and destroy her life very common especially in our pakistani communities yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and, and drugs and alcohol and gambling. and gambling and all these issues are very prevalent in our communities you know we've been brushing them under the carpet for the last 10 15 years and i'm not saying this to your face <laughs> not because you're my brother but if there's anybody who single-handedly brought these issues to the front yeah, and yeah. actually bought these taboo subjects in the massages in the last 10 years oh, yeah, is this man over here somebody give him an award but at well the, i was uh, nominated for an award you were dare i say last year when yeah. all that controversy Did spilled out again i actually yeah, won that award and it was rescinded yes. GG. people don't understand the impact yeah, they don't a lot of people don't know this british muslim awards yeah, I, I was voted for as imam of the year mm. for 2019 or 2018, I think it was. And this was immediately after the role we played in the speech that was delivered and all the work that we've done when in relation to four kids who, who died yeah, in yeah, Bradford. Yes, yes, yes. And the speech. Yeah, the massive jalsa here in the summer. Message to the youth mm. in August, I think, thereafter, we, we, we said we're going to take this moment to guide young people and help them and speak to them and speak about these issues. I was actually award, given an award which was rescinded yeah, I by was, that. I was being sarcastic. I know, but you. I'm telling you that reality was. It was rescinded because people put complaints in and said that, you know, he's uh, so-and-so and he's whatever. So, no, that's in his own place. Let's not go down that route. But so, yeah. At the end of the award, day, at the end of the day, it is we quite don't need unfortunate. Award, Adil. Allah is watching. May Allah give no, us the ajr. I mean, there's no great reward that Allah can give Allah us. Keep and, us and, and that's what I'm interested in. That's what I'm interested in. Allah Almighty keep us sincere. Trophies and these things. But the, the reality, though no, you got a few here, mashallah. Football ones, by the way. Um, but the reality is that Parents are sometimes making the wrong decisions for their children. You know, and it's like you've said a few times, it's a disclaimer that you keep putting in. Every scenario, every situation is unique, it's circumstantial, but it's it's a real shame. Uh, and uh, I was saying, obviously, that you were responsible for bringing a lot of these taboo subjects to the front and, you know, dealing with these issues through the massages, relating with the youngsters, packing out massages. Uh, and there was we spoke, I spoke on drugs and alcohol. Here he goes All the, no, no, I'm just saying, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is drugs and alcohol, gambling, mm-hmm. you know, illicit relationships, etc. These are topics. I, I don't want to take the convo down to a different route. We're going to come back to this point. But just to add here, Imam Adil, why aren't Imams speaking on this subject more? I don't think it's fair do you uh, think to this paint is everyone more, with the same brush. No, do you think this is more relevant? current to young people there's a fear i think i'm a young guy if i hear someone talking by it i probably think he's been through it so the imam might think that if he comes across giving the speech on the stage about the drugs and the uh, you know the lifestyle they might have this fear that the audience will think i've been in that lifestyle not necessarily not necessarily the problem is uh, that's a small part of it sorry to interject a lot of the imams over the last 20, 30 years have come from back home. Put They've context, not yeah. really uh, delved into Understood. the actual issues 
you know, we've been born in this country. We've gone to the schooling system in this country. We've lived on the streets in loose terms. But drugs and alcohol are prevalent in Pakistan as well, not just in England. The kids oh, over there. Yeah, are but when they when they come in from Pakistan on a visa that has been sponsored by a committee member, and their priority is and their priority is pockets. To uh, and you know we've seen this. No, I'm saying that that's right. But I'm saying even in Pakistan, the kids being smoking drugs. Yeah, it's a big problem. It's a problem. Yeah, they, got the same, yeah, they got the same problem. In people, Colombia yeah. and Mexico, and it, it's a so worldwide issue. I'm saying issue. you're not doing it there in Pakistan. It's a multi-billion uh, dollar and pound industry. What my mother is saying is that the priority of the ulama that came here it's and to imams here was here, to here was to settle here and have a good life, you establish know, life, establish Islam. Established the massages and they did a fantastic job. Yeah. Every alim deen of Sahih al uh, are the crowns on our heads. We're not knocking anyone because yeah. people get very but offended quickly. We've been objective. We've missed a generation out though. No, that's what I'm saying because they didn't really actually tackle the issues and the problem. Drugs and alcohol didn't just come about five, ten years ago. It was happening in the 80s, man. 80s and 70s. That's when they came in the 80s. When 70s and 80s. And, and you know, and our, our grand ulama who came in them. Uh, you know, they, everyone had their own role, their responsibility. Aqidah Khatm Nabuwat has always been, uh, you know, uh, an issue. Qadianis have been prevalent, not just now in 2020, years. last 30, years. 40, 50 years. 100 years, Imam Adil, you since know, the beginning. Yeah, I'm certainly, I'm talking about this country. I'm talking about this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, so many different challenges. A lot of religious challenges. Mm. We're saying that the social ills, not many have come forward within the Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah to say, I'm going to deal with these issues. Mm. But I'm going to speak the, on these. They're the real issues on the streets that are killing us. Of Not course the they are. Obviously, we need to defend Khatim and There's no doubt in that 1,000 million percent. But if there's five mullahs that are defending that, why are the other 10 trying to jump on that bandwagon and trying to defend it? They're doing their job. Let's find something else to do. Let's go clean the streets up. They never did that, though. And that's why we're failing now in our generation. And we're still feeling the effects of that coming into... I'll tell you what, there'll be some really good podcasts with Imam Adil on these topics because... We can look at this in, in a <laughs> I've been saying this for years in my bayanat and on speeches and people get very easily offended uh, and sadly and unfortunately they don't take on board what we're trying to say. Dar de dil na. We've, we've got no agenda. You know, my dad's not a peer. Uh, my dad's not a molvi. We're not losing murids. We've got our own idara. We don't rely on anyone. Financially, Alhamdulillah. nothing. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Fakarni. We're not doing, uh, you know, takabur pride, or in, pride this. in this. Yeah, Allah yeah. gives to whomsoever he wills. Tika, we see in our own idara, we can say what we want. If people want to accept it, they accept it. If switch they don't off. want to accept it, switch off and go listen to someone else. Reality is what we've been saying this for years. I remember Waltham store, uh, you know, them, them days in London, you know, when I was doing the Jumas there or the weekly gatherings, same points that I mentioning now were the same points that I was mentioning then, you know, and, and people get very easily offended. And the reality is that if you don't, tackle these issues head on if you don't discuss them be that religious problems be that social problems you know i did, I did a, a speech last year at the um what's the one that they organize the oldham lads uh, uh, Mefel. Mefel, yeah. Irfan uh, you know yeah. and, and and this was it was a, 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 a it pretty much summarized everything all the problems and issues with statistics you know we've got huge problems Ten thousand muslims left islam in 2018 so it's not just about social issues. There's religious problems as well. There's uh, mental health issues. There's depression. You know, the prison pop population is is increasing to such an extent that I think uh, the, the Muslims, the Muslims and uh, certainly in, uh, Pakistanis uh, are the highest representation of any ethnic minority. Uh, and, you know, marriage is a part of that problem. Uh, and divorce is obviously a part of the problems within our communities. So I, I think every alim deen has his responsibility. We're not knocking anyone. Yeah, you did what you had to do in the you know the uh, ten years ago, five years ago, and you you know still, still doing, doing it. it yeah, You're yeah. adapting, you're evolving, and that's what good people uh, do. That they with the time obviously evolve. Uh, you know, back then it was all about packing the massages out. We mentioned this a few times in our talks. Yeah, uh, privately now it's maybe obviously the internet, it's Instagram, it's it's these podcasts, and it's a way of communicating with people. And Alhamdulillah, you know, you've done really well in that regards, and long may it continue. But at the end of the day, uh, you're right. The ulama who are s the religious clergy who deal with the religious matters, yeah, like Islamic creed, atheism, akiza, atheism, all these issues. Fantastic, carry on. You're doing a great job, you know. But then there's ulama that need to deal with the muamalat, yeah, you know, the the societal issues, problems within. So an imam is not somebody who just lectures on creed and these, you know, theological issues. 
He's not just a theologian. He's actually a counselor. Mm. He's actually the one who's got to play football with the youth. He's got to be on the level of the youngsters to bring them into the, the next generation. But very, got to rarely, be on that level. very rarely do you find somebody who ticks all of the boxes. Mm. It's impossible. You know, language has been a huge barrier between uh, the Amatun the Nas, the Awam, uh, and the Ulama. The general public, yeah. You know, people, uh, uh, they are open to you and me, not because we've studied so much. <laughs> no chance. Uh, I, you know, I'll be the first to say my knowledge compared to yourself even is nothing. No, no, you know, no. we're, little, we're little pebbles in, compared to these, in comparison to these mountains. But people listen to us. Why? Because language is a huge attraction. You're talking about the youth. You know, even somebody was singing your praises that day. You know, somebody saying that, you know, he's got a very good way of articulating himself yeah. and carrying himself and comes across very good with the youth. Because again, we've been in that environment. We've been in that mahal. We understand what's needed, you know. And we, we feel that's the priority that we need to make. And we've got no restrictions or shackles on us to say what we need to because mm. we've got our own platform. Mm. You know, Even though it does come sometimes, comes back and obviously, uh, uh, you know, people get, we had an issue last year. What is the, the verse of the, the Quran? Wa ma arsalna min rasulin illa we didn't send a messenger except that he spoke the language of his people yeah the job of those who carry on the prophetic mission those who are inheritors of this mission mm. that they speak the language of those people if you want to help the word of allah and his rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, spread, this it. Mean, spread it in the language you know me speak english yeah, yeah talk to the you we're living in the united kingdom there's problems here deal with them and this Do is that why mean, that's again, my argument this is why, again, obviously, we're not saying it because we've, we've studied from the Idara or we have an affiliation to Qibla Pizal Sab, but a man ahead of his time. Whilst all the ulama from his generation came to this country and prioritized about other things, building masajids, great efforts of Qibla Pizal Sayyid Maruf Shah Sab, here in Bradford, you know, fantastic. Others who may be worried about, uh, you know, their astane and preserving. Uh, the murids and so on and so forth and making uh, frequent annual trips from Pakistan to the UK not really giving anything back to the people in the UK fine nothing wrong with that you know they did what they did some have passed on onto the, the next life not much of a legacy left on you know you can discuss that in another podcast but you know Kibla Pizasa was you know somebody if you who was to, if, I mean I can't put it on now I mean maybe one day we'll do a podcast on Kibla Pizasa or something but there's actually a speech of Pizasa which uh, the guys at Jamil Karam put up on their, their Facebook page and it was the one they delivered in front of Huzuz Yalumat Pir Karam Shah Sabrah Mutullah, their teacher, a mentor, the spiritual guide, everything. And it was at the, the premise of Jamil Karam in the sports hall, I think it was. And uh, it was in 1990, uh, maybe, or 91, I, I can't remember. It won't be 85, or maybe 85 even. And Pizasab delivers a speech that you would think it was delivered yesterday, hmm. about today. But it was done 30 odd years ago. So you, to know what's happening, what's coming ahead. And we've got to be ahead of our time. We've this got to look at what the Youngsters who are watching now, if you've got the salahiyat, you've got the uh, you know ability, you've got uh, potential. You know, there's this good brother, mashallah, chairman sahab, Robert Gulam Mustafa sahab, Tahir sahab's son. Very impressed with him, the way he carries himself, uh, the way he... Uh, you know, conducts himself very muaddab and, and, you know, with a little bit of guidance, with a bit of knowledge, the kid can go far. He, he's doing speeches now on Naveed Sound's platform and, you okay. know, I keep an eye on everything and Alhamdulillah, he, you know, he's a credit to his father and and there's so many youngsters like that who've got that potential. They just need that little bit of guidance. We've got idaras, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, Islam, compared to 10 years Rahman ago, Qibla Peer, Habib Rahman Saab, uh, you know, uh, Saab, Jamil we've got Karim. GIC, uh, you know, Green Gate Islamic College in Oldham, we've got MMC, we've got Dawit Islami. You know, Phenomenal without being objective and, and, you know, I'm, uh, you know, we've all got our opinions, but fantastic work that they do. And affiliations, but for Ahlul Sunnah Dhiwal Jamaat, these are one single Jamaat in the last... Qibla Mufti Hassan Raza Saab here for sisters years. in Bradford, you yeah. know, the weekend courses... You know, whether it's part-time, whether it's full-time, whether it's a one-year course, three-year course, whether they call it Ali, whether they call it Mufti course, whatever. But getting people off the streets, bringing them into the massages, educating them. You know, you teach a man, you teach an individual. You teach a woman, you've educated a nation. Mm. And we really need to come together. And when we look at the bigger picture, then these issues of family planning and, uh, you know, and family and, and all these problems that we've discussed over the last two, three days through uh, and two, three nights on podcast, slowly slowly they begin to 
they get uh, eradicate. They, they'll be solved. Yeah. Bringing back the discussion to marriage, that if the issues within marriage will get solved when you go back to the Quran and the mm. Sunnah, you put that at the forefront. You take culture out of the equation. You take ignorance, ignorance out of this, and you say, well, you know what? What does the Quran say about this? What does the Quran say about domestic violence? What does the Quran say? What did the Prophet ﷺ, how do they deal with domestic violence? And because they dealt with it in this manner, my answer is there. No woman should stay in a marriage where they are being domestically abused. Mm. No woman should sit there and take that. It came to the Prophet ﷺ about a man called Thabit. And she complained and said, Ya Rasulullah, I mean, if, if Imam Adil can shed or Didi, you can shed light of anyone you've heard or seen that have gone through these problems and, and, and how to deal with that. Uh, in the meantime, I'll, I'll look for the, the exact wording of the hadith so that people can, um, can benefit from this. What do I need to speak about, Imam Adil? Brother, the platform is yours. He the the mic is yours. Well, I know the nikah did on the weekend. The woman was divorced. They told me um, she was stuck in a marriage for five years, uh, being beaten up, abused. Mm. And it was actually what we spoke about at the start. I was going to use it as an example, but I might as well just use it now. Uh, she was married to her cousin previously. Uh, cha cha I think. For five years, um, they bought him over, continuously beat her up. Uh, she complained to the family about three years ago. They See, there, there is that lalaj as well. We were talking earlier, selfishness of parents. They want to get their, what do you call it, brother's son over. Or the, uh, you know, the sister's yeah. daughter so over. they bought him over. Yeah. The, the kid got bought over there. And his parents kind of backtracked on the whole situation, saying, yeah, well, Shadi or Yeun, he's come over. And if he is the way he is, then that, that's just what he is, isn't it? Mm. But they kept her stuck for two years, but she, she was trying to find a voice. Nobody listened to her within the family, which is what is sad, is the point I'm trying to make now. That if you really love your family members, and we really do say that we love our family members, our brothers, our sisters, um, parents loving their kids, I know there's certain circumstances, like I'm talking about this one, where they do come forward and they do speak to their parents and they do try to take that step in the hope that their parents, their mum and their dad will eventually listen to them and support them. And Because it takes a lot, obviously, if she's getting beaten up, she could probably have the fear of uh, you know, being told that she's lying if she comes forward and she speaks to her parents. That she's just trying to make something up just to break the marriage up. She doesn't mm. really like that guy because he's from Pakistan. We don't even know the circumstances before the that, wedding. That is an issue as well that usually uh, there's a, a less of a chance of family accepting what the sister's saying yes. as opposed to what the brother says. And it led to this where she uh, she did a khula herself and she's got married again this weekend. Mm. But it took her two years to get out of the marriage. Two and, years. And, and on domestic violence, I found the hadith. It's narrated in the sunnah of Imam al-Dharami and that Yahya bin Sa'id reported. That Habiba bin Sahal was the wife of Thabit bin Qais radiallahu an. And it was mentioned to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they were married and she was his neighbor. She was his neighbor. And that Thabit had struck her, so she appeared at the door of Nabi alayhi salatu salam and she said, Thabit and I can no longer be married. You know, it's, I, I can't tolerate this anymore. To which Nabi alayhi salatu salam said to Sayyidina Thabit radiallahu an, his companion, Khudh minha wa khalli sabilaha. Khudminha, take what she owes to you and let her go her way. Yani let her out of this marriage. She doesn't deserve to stay in this in, a, in, a, in an abusive marriage. Now, this is the this is an example in the time of the Prophet. Why should any woman stay in that? You're, you've just narrated an example of somebody who was being in the scenario where she's had to go and get a khula and, and she's she's had to separate from from um from her previous marriage after her family refused her how can a family like i don't understand imagine i mean maybe then they could accept it for their own wives they would they would allow that i mean it's just it's sad very very uh, sad. the psychology in some people is shocking man and and it and it needs to be said this stuff needs to be said i'm sorry man it, it might break some people's hearts people might not agree with it but it's not acceptable i was saying it to my mum and and I just said to him, I said, there's a huge problem out there. People are struggling. Every home seems to have some Have this sort of marriage issue. Mm. Like, no marriage is perfect. You're going to have problems. 
But the way it's being dealt with, the way it's happened, how it started, how it's going, how it's ending, it just seems like this. Marriage problems are going to exist till the end of time, most likely. There's no denying. We're never going to have a perfection in that. But it's having the knowledge and the tools to be able to manage, to avoid breakup. You know, if there's an issue between a husband and wife, the family should resolve that. Hmm. In-laws interference in marriages. पहले दौरविच कोशिश करने सं सुला करा इज्जत बच्चा साड़ी इस दौरविच कोशिश करने स्प्लेट में यू नो इट्स अ कंपलीटली डिफरेंट अप्रोच एंड एंड द इंटरफेरेंस ऑफ इन-लॉज विद इन मैरिजेस सिस्टर इन-लॉज ब्रदर इन-लॉज यू नो इंटरफेरिंग इन द मैरिज ऑफ अनदर व्हाई व्हाई यू सो इंटरेस्टेड इन हाउ शी इज इफ हर किड्स हैव बिकम डॉक्टर्स व्हाई यू गॉट अ प्रॉब्लम व्हाई यू गॉट जेलसी अगेंस्ट दैट यू शुड बी सेइंग माशाल्लाह यू शुड हैव दिस लेवल ऑफ एनवी रिप्टा व्हाई यू से या अल्लाह व्हाई यू हैव गिवन देम गिव मी टू गिव मी बेटर देन दिस No saying oh why have they got it this, this is how jealousy because they see that even women are we we've, we've experienced well. it first and in our own family you know how how has my father i won't take his name here on live how has his sons become hafiz of the quran and that you know he was even he was a taxi driver jealousy that exists people can't accept it can't stomach this hmm. and these are deep rooted illnesses which all go back to what i started on the first day of this podcast to your heart the hearts are corrupt there is some sort of illness there are problems within this 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 piece of flesh that we need to fix we need to fix up our hearts because if they right then things around us will be right and people need to understand that and accept that and and when we see that and we have to say every circumstance is different you know delaying marriage you shouldn't delay marriage من استطاع منكم الباء فليتزوج the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever can get married get married فليتزوج if you can't get married then fast fasting meaning fasting what what does that do i mean i'll i'll elaborate imam adil can elaborate fasting is a shield it when you starve your stomach you starve your privates you starve everything within your system you don't have the urge the sexual urge which arouses within you when you eat certain foods this is mentioned by imam ghazali and the ulama of tasawwuf and is is you know well documented in the books that's why they say that you should fast fasting is good for you to control the sexual desire and the urge you know and we all you know when we're in ramadan look at how it is how we, we we're so you know controlled in that sense we're more worried about eating than we are about anything else because it's this um carnal desire is in everyone It's in human nature it's to have to survive. So we the, need it. It's it's the sexual aspect. I mean, I don't want to go into the psychology or the philosophy of it, but we Allah Almighty has created man with this. When Sayyidina Adam seed say the Hawa, and move towards say the Hawa, like in that direction, nikah had to be made. I'm not trying to insinuate anything bad here. What I'm trying to say is that this is how the concept of nikah came about, and then the mahar and the the the, the witnesses of. the angels being the witness the mahar being the salawat on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as mentioned in books of tafsir and, and and history as well and then they got married and then they had children and then their children got married within themselves an element of incest occurred here which was accepted within that sharia at that time later which was abolished and banned that it can't happen you can't and then hurimat alaykum ummahatukum and all these verses islam came and explained that now we we got to understand this that How do you control? It? Don't delay marriage. If you need to get married, get married. Whether you're twenty, whether you're nineteen, whether you're 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 twenty-one, twenty-two. Yes, if you're in the position financially, people say, "Oh, I can't have children." Talking about family planning, for example, just touching on it before we elaborate on it more. Oh, I can't. You know, what what's the verse of the Quran? The لا تقتلوا أولادكم خشية إملاك. Don't don't kill your children in fear of poverty. And some ulama right here in the the, the modern day, the ulama. in the contemporary scholars would they say that well what does this mean don't kill your children out of fear of poverty meaning that why if if allah's going to bless you with kids and tomorrow you think you can't provide for them why allah's the one who provides have children allah will give you he will open means of your risk and that he will provide for them so we see this and and it's problematic these things occur these are situations and scenarios don't let don't You know what is it? I think a brother mentioned in the comments about delaying. You shouldn't delay your maghrib salah, and you should not delay the the, the, the uh, your daughter's wedding, the, your, the marriage of your daughter. You marriage. The hadith Sharif yesterday. Yesterday yeah. you mentioned it. You shouldn't mm-hmm. delay, and people are delaying delaying for for 
career purposes. People are delaying it for reasons that are trivial. Like, is that necessary? Or is you completing half your iman and protecting yourself from zina necessary? People might say, well, well why you sat here at 30? I'm, people might argue that against me and say, well, why you not? I've been married once. I've mentioned many a time. And at the same time, again? I'd love to get married. Why wouldn't I? Which Who wouldn't want to? again? <laughs> They just have to, innit? They just can't help themselves. No, you, uh, you put yourself in that situation. In what situation? Us, waiting for us to make some sort of a comment or react. Oh, yeah. The Patani you knows the same people are watching. They know, mashallah, no, no, you're married. Hopefully, before. more people are watching. Well, he knows but he's not going to get nothing out of us. No, but what I'm uh, trying to say is is that people shouldn't be sat there thinking, oh, you know, these restrictions, they don't know. We were trying to, we we're all on our own journey struggling. And I'm just making it open and apparent in that sense. On that word struggle, if there are issues and problems within a marriage, you know, it's not... Which there are. And there are, you know, ups and downs on a daily basis. You know, sometimes you have good days, sometimes you have bad days. You know, it's not the be all or the end all. We're talking about extremes, physical abuse, mental abuse. You know, domestic violence isn't just man beating woman up or... Woman 2020, meeting. woman being man up, yes. It's physical and mental, uh, sorry, mental Boss, and emotional. psychological and emotional as well. You know, we, we, we sometimes overlook them aspects of abuse. Uh, but, uh, you know, the word struggle that you mentioned, domestic violence is the uh, Emotional uh, the is the really our community. I think, uh, I think all our Pakistani parents have got an element of emotional blackmailing to their kids. Me, we're talking about marriage yourself. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying in, in general, we've got a lot of that in our community. Yeah. Emotional blackmailing. That's the form of abuse that we use. Husband towards wife, yeah. wife towards husband. Or parents, parents towards in-laws towards in-laws. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like emotional, yeah. Say, we bought you, we fed you, we clothed you. Well, obviously. And, and the point you were making, Imam Adil, a pertinent point, was that if you're going through them issues and problems and it's something trivial, something small, then don't just pa- press the panic button straight away. Because you've got a lot of people who do that. Who resort to, you know, you know or they separation. Very quick to say, oh, oh jadu huh? oh, yeah. Bringing us to this point, you know, Imam Kala jadu gaya, black magic ho gaya, you know, pira kul julne aata, ye karne aata, you know, taaviz lehne aata. Ye. But it's not necessarily the case. You know, if you're putting all your issues and problems on social media, if you're sharing your problems which are between you and your wife, which are private matters with your friends, with your relatives, with your own brothers and sisters. They said the walls have ears as well. Uh, and people are going to share them issues with others. And that's going to cause problems between uh, and friction between husband and wife. So something which is small becomes a big issue because you mismanaged it. You didn't deal with it properly. Uh, and at the end of the day... Let's go back to the Quran and Sunnah. Hmm. Let's ask the Prophet والسلام, what they said about this. And they said that the intimate matters within a marriage should not be shared. Not to your mother, not to your father, not to your brother. A wife should not going, go out and share these intimate... Mm. So what's in your bank account? You shouldn't be going telling people how much gold you have, this, that. You shouldn't be sharing the intimacy that is between a, a spouse. Certain things that are between you and there is a, a thick of intimacy. There is a level of um, understanding and religious jurisprudence even in relation to sexual intimacy between a husband and wife mm. to the point that the, you know, just an, uh, an, a little insight into what the books have written in that regards, that a man should not even look towards the, the, the area of a woman and vice versa. That it should be done where the lights are not on because there may be a defect or a fault inside the, uh, the partner that if he sees would put him off and then it could destroy the marriage. Look at the wisdom. Look at that wisdom behind mm. the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Educating the ummah in this matter. Going one step further. Hunna libasullakum wa antum libasullahunna. Allah Almighty in the Quran gives this analogy and this example of libas and uh, of clothing and how you should. Uh, the woman, hunna first towards the woman. The woman should obviously. Are for you. Uh, are, uh, she should cover the faults and the defects of the man and vice versa. The man of the woman, yani the husband to the wife. And it's important, uh, you know, rather than uh, exposing one another's uh, wrongs and mistakes. And we see this on social media uh, and, you know, very common in Mama families Adil, as well. We've seen it in families, we've seen in our own where we've seen, you know, they'll expose their own husbands to their sisters about his flaws and the way he is. And he's like this and he's like that. And, and they'll, they'll talk bad of him. This is happening and it's wrong. A woman should not do that about her. You know, you're, you're married to this person. Would you like, 
You wouldn't, I wouldn't want to talk bad about anyone that's not my friend. Never mind somebody I'm married to. Women are doing this too much nowadays. But then when they say, when, why did the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam say this? That when I went on the night of Lisra al Mi'raj and I seen majority of the inhabitants mm. in the hellfire were women. What does that mean? Majority of, because they're quarreling with their husbands. Now, I'm not saying all women are going to the hellfire and I'm not here to stereotype and Afasab is not discriminating no women saying majority of the women, men are as bad. Oh yeah, I need to put disclaimer, sorry. Because uh, somebody's going to come up and my body's died anyway, so you've got my full attention now. sorry, disclaimer. But, yeah, uh, like, you know, we're not here to discriminate women in, in, in any capacity, but women do have that in their nature. A woman has a more tendency that if a man was to look at another woman, just in passing glance, which is human nature, it can happen. How dare you look at her? You know, you're married to me. You should be looking at me. Mm. It can happen. Bro, we go to Morrison's. There's a, a good looking girl standing there, physically, mashallah, attractive, for example. And you've looked at her and said, thank you. How dare you say thank you to her? When she's working there, it's common courtesy to be gentle, uh, generous. I'm not flirting. There's a difference between flirting and, the, and, and being common courtesy. People mistake the two. That I might make a, 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 you might, or we might say a compliment to someone. And all of a sudden, well, you know, you're flirting with her. No, I'm not flirting. I'm just being, it's common courtesy. Mm. Understand the difference between a flirtation. Well, women are common. generally very, uh, you know, envious and, and they have a lot more hassad and jealousy in comparison to men. Disclaimer. No disclaimer. I'll be uh, open. Hey, and, hey, hey this is why they like you, Imam Adil. You're raw. You're ruthless. No. You just say as it is. Imam Adil. Let's talk with him. And nobody dare says it. Back to you. Because you know, they'll Adel. slit me. Share they'll him. slit him. <laughs> but they will not slit. No, but it's, it's a common thing. It's, it's within the fitra and the uh, natural disp uh, disposition. And, uh, uh, you know, it's in the nature of women uh, that they tend to have uh, jealousy and hasad uh, more so than men. Uh, I'm not saying that men don't have that. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, th there's got to be tolerance. Uh, the verse of the Quran, uh, you know, Islah for, and, 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 and for and so men to lower their gaze. Uh, and that doesn't just mean men lowering them ga their gazes, but, but the, Allah says to the women, women as well. In the next verse, yeah, ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, what's the verse? Or oh, you who believe, guddu mm. absarakum. Uh, uh, Surah al Nur. Uh, Surah al Nur. Yeah, there. Quran's over there. I don't even know the ayat. Right corner. I know where you're under. Is in the 18th part. I know that much. Yeah, you know, Hafiz of the Quran, I thought I'd put him on the spot, but I'm, obviously I'm not Hafiz of the Quran. He did that to me once in the university Quran. about three years ago, and about a thousand people then, remember they all gave me Nadi Takbir, and they all gave me a round of applause, because <laughs> that's the ayat, right? Yeah, but, you know, the verse of the Quran, <laughs> that, or you who believe, uh, low, uh, it is said to the believing men that they should lower their gazes, and mm. then the same with the believing women, they should lower their gazes and cover themselves and cover their bosoms, and, and all of this has been mentioned in the yeah. verses of the Quran. Go away, study Surah Al Nur, you'll find all the answers within there as well, and Surah Al Nisa and these surahs. And, and there's a hadith that I mentioned, I think, in the first podcast uh, in relation to this marriage, was in relation to that uh, a lot of women are not perfect except Sayyidah Maryam and Sayyidah Asiya and Khadija Al Kubra and the virtues of Sayyidah Aisha are like. You know, the virtues of Tharid over Sa'ir al Ta'am, and this hadith is mentioned. And a lot of people take this and say, Well, look, you know, men have been perfected, but women aren't, meaning that women are less than men. You have to understand what Mufassirin or Muhaddithin have written here. They have said in relation to this hadith that when Rasulullah said Allah that Allah. only a few women have reached perfection, they talk in terms of Nabuwat. Now, we believe, of course, the Asha'ira, Maturidiyya, we believe that the women. Um, weren't given nabuwa there was no woman that was selected to be a rasul or a nabi mm. there was no but there is opinion that has been mentioned about say maryam and her greatness etc but when they're saying they're saying that men are not perfect the anbiya are only perfect the, the perfection in the intellect and we we is, is mentioned in the books of mm. creed as well sanusi creed and other books of creed as well about the the qualities of the prophets of allah almighty when you study risalat the bab of risalat after tawheed is mentioned in there but women when we say this we're not we're not discriminating women by saying this men are imperfect as well as women men have these flaws as well as women but we seem to see a lot of tendency gossiping backbiting you know it, it is quite prevalent uh, amongst women and imam adil didn't mix his word and didn't was not apologetic in that regards uh, though we are a bit more diplomatic in that regards but you know it's, it's it exists it happens and you know Imam Adil's right 
the first, as soon as a problem occurs, don't go to Peer Saab and start exposing your issues and problems. It might not be as big as you make. It's probably trivial. The mm-hmm. first thing you should do is, if you're angry, get out. The husband should walk out. Go get a break. Go eat something. Go chill out outside for a bit. Make ablution. Make ablution. Come back. Sit down. Hmm. Be a mature adult and talk about it. And say, look, what's the problem? Because it's that uh, that state of anger and rage that leads to obviously a divorce, and it leads Ghadab. to uh, you know, and, and and there's a lot of uh, misconceptions regarding divorce, and it's obviously a part of our discussion today. Uh, in, in our communities to such an extent now that people are looking for loopholes to get out of the situation. Uh, but we have to really, uh, you know, educate our people. Uh, uh, some people ring us and say, you know, it's a state of anger, is in a state of rage. Uh, and, and this is why the Prophet said, do not get angry. Uh, being a- angry and having anger is haram. It is forbidden. Ghadab Be- in a shaitan. Uh, yeah, and it, it's something that obviously leads to consequences and repercussions. Uh, generally, we, as humans, we have these uh, flaws, and uh, you know, no one is perfect apart from the Ambiya and Mursaleen, which is what you've just alluded to, and, and there's no doubt in that. Uh, and this is our Bunyadi Aqidah that the Ambiya, Mursaleen, uh, and the Malaika are ma'asum. Uh, and the rest are mahfuz, yes, which is an issue. Uh, a topic which has been discussed gee, in the subcontinent right at now. At this moment in time, but this is basic <coughs> aqaid. But at the end of the day, uh, it is uh, <coughs> going to become uh, extremely difficult uh, for a husband to backtrack uh, and to Retract. apologize once he said, talaq hai, talaq hai, talaq hai. That's it, game over. Three strikes are out, people. You know, it, it's as simple Married as men, that. Don't get angry and do not resort to the word divorce. Because I tell you what, there is no way out. Not even as a joke. And this is a talaq, bid'ah. This is the worst type of talaq to give three divorces in one sitting. And sadly, unfortunately, they give the divorce and they're still sleeping with her the same night. Not they're, knowing they're the not knowing that what they've, they've said. this tie. Albatta, correct me if I'm wrong, that even if they're in the state of drunkenness, yeah. yeah, they put themselves in that state of nasha. Therefore, that divorce still stands. It still stands. You don't even need a witness for it. Some people message us. Do you need two, two witnesses for a divorce? Yeah. Uh, like we have for nikah. It's a condition for nikah, but it's not for talaq, for, no. not the, for divorce. So these are s- small basic masail which people are, are ill, uh, uh, ill aware of or they're not, they're not aware of. They ignorant of this. these things. And, and it's something that has to be made clear. Uh, you know, and yes, there can be differences. People are not compatible. You, you know, you sit here as an example of that. Somebody who was married, it didn't work out. You want co- two people are not always meant to be together. Mm, it's you know, it is what it is. Separate with, with you know, with uh, the Prophet ﷺ himself married many divorces. You know, that in itself is uh, shows shows us that uh, you know it's something that is not frowned upon. You know, sadly and unfortunately, I touched upon it briefly yesterday. Um, some parents assume that, that their son or daughter has been divorced and others uh, think they have some sort of superiority. Uh, if, if the son brings a potential rishta home and she is a divorcee, parents will dismiss it or vice versa. Uh, and sadly, unfortunately, we have these issues uh, and, and problems. And there's so many... But affairs uh, are also leading to divorces. Yeah. The reason I mentioned this mm-hmm. is because I had to do somebody's nikah two months ago this brother rang me and he never told me that the girl he's marrying has not even been divorced yet. So I got put in a bit of a situation and just saying, because she's divorced with four kids and she's been having an affair with him for six, seven months and they oh got wow. caught basically. So he wanted to do the nikah really quick, get it over with and then move on. Hmm. But then when you look at it, you think she's got four kids, man. She's got a, a husband and she's willing to leave all them four kids. She was looking after him through the kids. Her sister's son. She left them all for this guy. She left all her kids for one guy and two weeks later they rang me and they said hey, we got problems in our marriage now. Genuinely. Well, if, 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 you see, if the marriage is found upon wrong, then what, you know, the devil, if, if it started, the devil's going to play the games, man. We've got to understand the devil is our enemy. It's a hidden enemy that's out there that is around us all the time trying to cause problems and issues. And if we don't tame and control our nafs, it will cause us problems and issues. 
and these problems and issues occur in marriages. This is like, this is a touchy aspect of it. Like Imam Adil said, you've got to educate yourself before marriage on what divorce is. There's types of, there's talaq which is sunnah, which is, which is permitted that mm. you give one divorce and then she enters into her, into her menses. So she, you divorce her when she's in her pure state. Mm. She's not on a menstrual cycle or she's not on a menses. And then <clears throat> in that state you give divorce, she passes through her menses and enters. If in that time you was to sleep with her or do anything intimate with her, then you've retracted. This is called ruju, talaq raji'i. Mm. You've, you've retracted that divorce. Don't make the talaq talaq ba'ina. Don't make it bound that you have to and you only have three strikes mm. and after that then the concept of halala comes in and etc and it becomes very very tricky and technical complicated and complicated why put yourself in that scenario in the first place somebody asked the question islam i mean last year imam adil me and you both were given this issue mm. i mentioned the brother who rang his boat um i don't know if you remember who did the divorce i mentioned it after the podcast was given the rang is and he said i've divorced my wife uh, three times is it true I have to do halal or not? They rang you first and you said yeah. So they tried to get a loophole out of me because they didn't understand halal. And then they were trying to argue against halal that is not part of Islam. How can some, such a concept exist within Islam? Because they didn't understand like you just divorced your wife now, mate. He was trying to say, no, no, I didn't. I only did it twice. And she was saying, no, you said it three times to me last night. So they had a massive argument. So there's a verse of the divorced. Quran which mentions it. Hatta uh, tanki ha zawjan Yeah. You cannot marry until she gets married to Zawjan Ghayrahu. Mm. You know, and, and, and he didn't understand all that, man. He, was, but, he had a big argument with me. It was like massive. Literally, you wouldn't need to come here. He was, you know, effing and blinding, saying, look, you're, you're just doing your purpose. I go, look, brother, it's the religion. I'm not, I didn't make the rule up. Nor did the next man. It was just how it is. No, but why you put yourself in that situation in the first place, bro? You, you, you're good to throw your weight about on set who's or the religion, this, that. Who told you to mess it up in the first place? Yeah. Why weren't you right with her? Why, why did you get that angry that it is, you resorted to that? Do, you know, Kazimin al ghayz Allah talks about it. Those who suppress the anger, those who control the anger at the time of... It's hard. That's what anger is, to control. You know, to have this, uh, this control over this and have this milkiya over yourself that you don't lose yourself in the state of anger. So when you get angry, you're going to resort to saying, get out of my life. You're going to say certain statements which will need elaboration, mm. which is why there's sarih and kinaya. Mm. You might say some words like, go to your mum's house now. Maybe what you're intending by saying, go to your mum's house is, I've divorced you. If that's what you intended, then that's a divorce. Yes. You know, talaq, you have the discussion of sarih and kinaya talaq as well, which... If you study, I mean, I've got the book here. I'll figure, I should have it from yesterday. Al Fikul Hanafi, Fi Thobihil Jadid. In modern light, the, the Hanafi school. And in here, you have the discussion on, on talaq and, 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 and this discussion of aqsamu talaq, ta'rifu talaq, the definition of talaq, the types of talaq, sunnah. Uh, you know, how Allah Almighty mentioned, Fataliku hunna li'iddati hinna. And then, you know, you've got. You've got it mentioned and and talakul bid'a, talakul sunna, talakul bid'a, you know, shurutu buku it talak, alfaz talak, the words of talak, sarih alfaz, kinaya alfaz, you know, tafwidu talak. Do you know, but remember studying usul shashi? And and hukmul amri bil yad. Do you remember him? In relation, well, that's, uh, you know, uh, 10 years ago. A different discussion, but along uh, within the, under this bab. You know, ta'aliku talaqi alal mashi'ah. Gigi, we get so the point. So we're saying the point, talaqul mu'allaka. And, 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 and this is, it's imp- well, the point I'm trying to make here, Imam Adil, is that people need to study this. They need to learn uh, jurisprudence, the law. This is Islamic law. It's not just for a mufti to learn. You know, mm. Kuduri is a very basic text which <coughs> talks about this. And then after Kuduri, you have, you know, other texts like Kanz and other books which also yeah, But what about those people this? who uh, don't have access to these books? Courses. We will design a course. They come study with us. Pay the 10, 15, 20 pound and learn. You've, you've paid 20 pound and you're safe for life. You might be safe from a potential divorce in the future because mm. you've educated yourself. No, but circumstances, uh, obviously... Circumstantial. This yeah. discussion and topic, the last three days, is all circumstantial. We're talking in a de- general aspect, but circumstantially, Imam Adil, you know, it, it can happen. And people need to at least, you know, tie the camel, at least do their bit. We don't know what tomorrow holds. You know, the wife could die. He becomes widows. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We shouldn't be worried too much about that. But in the moment, we should know 
that these are my rights. Yesterday I read out the rights of the wife and the husband in passing. I, I mentioned that. And one of the rights of the wife is what? That the husband educates the wife. They're talking about knowledge and education in the comments. What does that mean? Educate yourself. Educate your wives and yourself about the deen. Hmm. And that's very important. Very, very important. And just a, a point on the comments. Uh, some people seem to be getting a bit carried away. Zadgalla, you're listening. Uh, so if you're listening, then take on board what's being said. If you don't agree, you don't agree. Like we said earlier, yeah. you can switch off. Go do something else. You know, watch match of the day. But at the end of the day, if you're listening, you're listening. And, you know, let's not get into the debates in the comment section. It's not just on this podcast. Generally, I've realized... You know, when this is one of the reasons why I don't like going live. I know you mentioned it last time and encouraged me to do so. Every person thinks that people are entitled to opinions, uh, though. Opinions, yes, but they've got the right to write what they want. If they qualify to make that opinion, what uh, if it's a general opinion? General opinion or making a a good statement, giving dua, saying something good. That doesn't just apply to speech. It also replies to what you're writing as well. Yeah, but are we not, uh, uh, not, you know... Not everybody's in a position to give an opinion. Freedom of speech, my mother. Freedom of speech, my <laughs> uh, MMI, what do you call it? Pressing buttons. No, no, uh, but uh, of course, because people oh. will be sad. They're thinking, well... Chaudhary Sahib, he put his head up as well. I don't know if he rolled up. Yeah. So gal, gal hai that uh, freedom of speech is in its own right, yes. But if two people, three people are having a discussion, so you listen to the discussion. If you don't, just go do it. Go, but uh, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know what's what being said. Just so. do what you're huh? going to listen to advice. You mean, generally, because we do, we this yeah, last we've seen 2020, lives 2020 yeah. has been all about lives. Online, Instagram yeah. lives, Facebook lives, YouTube's. and now podcasts and all. Co- uh, you my know. mother's point, uh, bang on right, is more general than religion. Is just uh, what's wrong with the world is what you just said right now. Yeah, right? everyone's giving opinion and everything. Can I see Mike about. Tyson? Huh? What's that quote that Which somebody one? attributes to him? Merry Christmas. <laughs> not, <laughs> not that one. The one that uh, uh, about if you were in front of me and if you want behind the screen and I'll give you. Uh, that's the problem. Was it Javad? I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe Basically, if you said it in front of my face, I'll knock his No, but you wouldn't have. Room. You yeah. wouldn't say it in front yeah, of my face. Exactly. Behind, yeah. the, behind the you know, keyboard so behind warriors, the what we call Basically keyboard warriors. Keyboard you know, there's yeah. plenty, man. Everyone's Social got Social media vigilantes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> even Javad give a baba. Uh, which is a which is rare amazing. thing. So please, guys, you know, if you're going through problems in your marriage, don't resort to going to Peer Saab and these external people to resolve it. Calm down, relax, sit with your wife and talk to her. And if you think there's a breakdown in communication, then there's a problem here. There's a serious problem. I mean, I don't, maybe this marriage won't work if you can't communicate. Basics is communication. You know, after four years, a dog would be ob- obedient to, uh, uh, you know, his, his owner because they communicate. a dog understands the language of his owner. And we're not, you know, I'm not trying to equate or, you know, simulate or um, you know, metaphorically say anything in this regard. But your husband and wife, you've lived together for 20 years and now you've got a breakdown in communication. Mm. I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand how it's broke down. What's, what's gone wrong? Identify the problem and fix it. Instead of taking your problems to the whole world and, you know, broadcasting them on social media. Guys are married and, you know, there's, there's a lot of married couples out there who, who are using social media platform to show their marriage good on them they're making money whatever that's in its own place but then there's others are out there who are showing you know pictures of their children for example etc and what's happening extortion hasad i know young they, I you know, know young lads well, we had this issue uh, uh, so had this issue last year you know my memory isn't fantastic although as a uh, husband and wife couple in nikab lani see this one going to mention the hasanat yeah yeah Quite documented with the charity, what's happened with you them. Know, and the ones that take the and all our right? people are gullible, like that. man. You know, itne they give two hundred thousand pounds or something. Cha- man. Te te you know, yeah, I, I'm they sorry give. to say, but you know, you, you uh, people might tell me, I'm, I they're gonna get tired into it. I don't really care what people think, to be honest. But I can't, you know, our people are so gullible, man. You know, yeah. I, I've been very vocal about this. The, the, when you the, say our people, Imam, what are we saying? Oh, Mir Priz, yeah. There you oh, go. Oh, yeah, were you African? <laughs> That's not nice. No, I'm talking about Mir Priz, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm talking about Mir Priz. No, you're saying, I, are you talking from <laughs> Sunni perspective? Are you talking no, from the... Bro. I'm talking you know, Mir Priz. Uh, Ali Sunnat wal Jamal. What, what are you... There. I'm talking so Mir Priz, man. You don't know what your three is gone. Huh? 
We've cracked I'm, him up. We've got him I'm talking hundreds. about meat putties, man. We are the most gullible people on the face of this earth. But we're the biggest hearted as well. Oh, oh, hey, we, 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 no, no, we have big hearts. Yeah, that's the only thing we have. Jai we don't we have, have any brains. Hearts. Even then, what big hearts meat putties? Uh. No, man, don't, don't slay yeah, me yeah, for that bad, man. We Come on. No, but I know our people, what you're trying to say. Meepri, Azad Kashmir, generally, you know, he's not got a beard. But Peter is a beard. What Peter is a beard? I'm sorry, I've got the beard issue. It's something that is obviously... Always uh, been a, uh, a bone that you like to pick. And then it's the same with, what do you call it, these issues of marriage and the same issue that we were just touching upon before I went into the uh, issue of Ramadan. Issue of marriage. What, what was we talking about? I just think uh, what, what, because the whole... <laughs> What was the one? Yeah, <laughs> that's not sure. See, we've got yeah. Imam Adil, you cramped too. We just no, you didn't. Books. But you was, you, what you was on about was obviously with regards to... Um, this uh, charity thing. Yeah, yeah. Give him money, yeah. The Rushdi of Allah, Masalli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Sayyidina Muhammad. No tahqeeq, no research, no what do you call it, looking into, uh, you know, where that money is going to. And so many charity scams have happened. I'm not going to name charities. You know, I'm, I'm feeling tired, but I'm not gonna go off on one. Uh, yes, and 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 this this issue, this Hasanat or whatever, I didn't. I came across it that day on FivePillars.com no, or whatever quite, it was. Old, yeah. Huge issue, two hundred thousand pounds. They swindled out of people. Not just that, mom. Not I just meat priest. There could be anyone. Yeah, but, know, but our people generally, generally, our experience of knowing people, yeah, we yeah. do like to give without oh, verifying yeah. or validating. Please, that ja afasikum binaba in fatabayanu. When a a fasik or a, an in uh, you know an, somebody who's ill mannered or evil comes to you with an, an a narration, verify it. Now we're not in in general. You should verify stuff anyway. Don't just give. Your, this is your hard earned money. You're giving in somewhere where you don't. You know, verify information. We live in a world where it's he you say, kafa lil mar'i no kafa lil kathibi. No, what's the hadith of the Prophet Ali Salat was salam? Allahumma salli ala Rushri fa Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa ala Rahmatullahi wa sallam. Kafa bil mar'i kathiban an yuhadditha bi kulli ma sami'a minhu aw kama qala alayhi salat was salam. It is enough for a person to be considered a liar that he passes on what he's heard. Just sharing hearsay, oh I heard, did you hear this? This is enough for a person to be considered a liar. That's what the it's a is. lie. You know, Chinese whispers. You heard, you've not, you've not seen it. You've not witnessed it. Don't spread it. Until it's verified, it's proved. Then, even then, on, on that point, I'm on the dean when they say somebody's committed zina, the, uh, the witness, it has to be fought in it. They have to be sound. And they have to like... Witness the act of penetration. Yes, thank you very much. I was mm. going to say that. You've said it from a... That's when you expose another person for doing a sin. A zina. Mm. A zina. A zina in this aspect. And even then, if you zina. were to cover and veil the sin, Until that would be then, better. It's better for even you. Even if you think mm. that behind the curtain, why? we're doing it. Why is it better for you to cover the sin to avoid facade in the ummah? That's it. Mm. Why is it better for you to cover sin to avoid facade in the... Why is it better for you to cover the sins of your family to avoid facade in the family? Islam is big on covering people's sins. Covering problems. Why? Because we don't want to spread corruption and fasad in the community. To avoid this corruption in the fasad in the community, cover it. We're not saying that this is a, a reason then to brush it under the carpet. So it no. no it should be dealt with. Uh, elders should speak to that individual and those people who are involved in the issue and matter. Whether it's uh, charitable know? related, religious authorities, whatever it may be. Whatever it is. It, you know, it's got to be dealt in a way where it's amicable and not bought out into the public domain. Because if it's bought into the public domain, you are going to create fitna. Mm. And al-fitna too, ashaddu min al-qatal, akbaru min al-qatal in one verse. Fitna is worse than, you know, fitna meaning mischief, facade, corruption is worse. This is worse than even murder. This is why, please, we should fix this, man. Guys, got a problem, resolve it, deal with <laughs> it. <laughs> it they would sit down. I remember solve when I family went. family problems, yeah. I went first time with uh, Uncle Abid, uh, and this uh, image is vivid in my mind, yes. And all the elders of Karak would obviously come to our house. Uh, Babaji was, you know, my dada, Jan, uh, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, he was an elder of his community of is the village people will come there 
and they would you know they would discuss issues problems oh and got to gaya na got to gaya bande ikatte oh sariya the fasla karo ji and put all the beds together cut up together and all they all sit there and and that's it they just talk it out and they find an amicable solution to the problem yes whereas now whereas now uh, we've got too many to social media too <laughs> many chiefs and unfortunately not enough uh, Indian. indians uh, in no, the but sense that now we're resorting to well i'm going to expose why because i'll mm. get x amount of likes x amount of following because i'm the guy who's exposed door badri gaya na and we think we're actually doing a favor you've done worse for the ummah you've created more problems in the ummah by doing this everyone is to be on top mm. and is it so is is important and and making this relative to the conversation on podcast This is one of the reasons marriages don't work. Mm. They don't resolve the issues internally. They like to, you know, what do they say? Put the dirty laundry in in air public. The dirty laundry. They like to air the dirty laundry. Why? Mm. Nobody would like to air anyone's dirty laundry. They'll wash it and then put it out. Nobody would. Bec- nobody wants to show. This is nature of humans. But it seems like we've become we've regressed as humans, and we we prefer to put everything bad out. Why? Come on, man! As an ummah, as Muslims, we need to fix up. Go back to the Quran and Sunnah. And look at what the Quran and Sunnah says. Why are we leaving? You know, <coughs> the way of Allah and His Rasul, Alayhi Salatu Wassalam. Yeah, the podcast, Deen and Dunya. But I'll be straight with you. For me, I just want to bring people back to the Quran and Sunnah. This is where all our guidance is. We might be relative, young, on a level. We speak, etc. But for me, let's go back to the Quran. So, what does the Quran and Sunnah say about this, about marriage and all these issues? And we go back to that and we see that resolve it. وَعَشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Treat your wives good. Treat them gentle. هُنَّ لِبَاسٌ لَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لِبَاسٌ لَهُنْ فَأَتُوا هَرْثَكُمْ You know, intimacy. All of this Islam mentions. Man, we're privileged. There's no greater blessing than Islam in our lives and the Prophet ﷺ and the Quran al-Kareem and al-Iman. These are the pl- blessings and privileges that we have. And it's important that we don't resort to these things when it comes to problems within marriage. You know, You have arguments. Well, what's the best way to, you know, the golden question? How do you avoid it? You How do you avoid it? You can't avoid an argument. You know, it's, okay, it's temperamental. Uh, you know, it's, it's in human nature. Uh, you know, sometimes she's having a good day and you're having a bad day. Sometimes you're having a bad day. She's having a good day. You know, it's very rare, very rare that, uh, you know, you, you're both on the same page on the same day. You know, because women go through that time of the month. Yeah. you know and at the same time uh, you know uh, you know brothers are out they're working they've got their pressures and stresses of work and all that kind of stuff so i i don't think there's any fairy tale uh, way of saying that there won't be any arguments so that's part and parcel and uh, is you know it's all within the uh, the the daily you know aspect of marriage but it's, it's how you deal with it how you build that understanding you know it takes time Uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, myself personally, be married uh, five years, and you know my situation is quite unique. I think pretty much to everyone's in the regards to uh, you know quite active in what we're doing uh, for the Deen to the best of our ability. Mm-hmm. You know, leading the five daily prayers, but you, you've got to build an understanding around all that. Uh, you know, just a very simple example today. Uh, you know, the, the, the missus was cleaning the loft. and uh, you know uh, rifka was put to sleep uh, your niece yes janaba know who she is and uh, <laughs> eyes obviously is a bit of a handful now so you know it, it was a case of come do namaz and then go back home but I sometimes I come do namaz and maybe have five ten minutes to myself in in the office or you know uh, mm. mark some papers <laughs> we've got all these papers here i've got a lot of work to do so what i'm trying to say is when i say no no i've got to do this I've got to do this. Mm. It's my way or the highway. Compromise. It's compromise. You, you know, nice. sometimes, yeah. sometimes I, 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 I've, especially when obviously pre-COVID, uh, you know, speeches every single weekend, every single weekend, Saturday and Sunday, classes, speeches, classes, speech. But I would always make time for family, you know, I w- and common interests. You're gonna probably laugh at this one, but you two, Bobby, you know, obviously, our common interest are animals. and you know we love going to the zoo you know and and we'll make a whole day out of it uh, and 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 you've got to give that time take you know take your wife out for dinner islam doesn't say you can't take your wife out for dinner again cultural mindsets people assume oh no, no you know 
to Molvi Sab, no Molvi Sab, that's in his own place. But generally, if it's in Parda and it's, you know, it's done properly, that there's nothing wrong in a husband taking his wife and his children and family out to, to go eat. and eat, uh, you know, and, 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 and generally Bonding spending and time building, with them, building you know, a going on holiday. There's nothing wrong. Islam nothing. doesn't spend stop you wife. from. If anything, Islam encourages you to spend on your family and children. You know, there's reward on certain days, uh, Yomul Ashura, if I'm not mistaken, or other days where if you spend on uh, your wife, you, you spend reward. on your children, there's a lot more reward. You know, we'll go out and spend a hundred pound on trainers for ourselves, yeah, and and we won't give can't anything to the wife. Loose. You know, we can't buy anything for our, nice for our children. I'm talking generally here. G -G. You know, some people who don't spend time with their children at all, and that's a podcast in itself. You know, and 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 really, really, uh, uh, you know, the upsetting how people have have viewed uh, parenting today. Give them a smartphone, give them a laptop. TV ne samne bali yor on that. Said that's our job done. Or buy them the latest clothes, buy them the latest trainers, you know, give them Fortnite or whatever it is. You touched upon this on Juma, uh, and and you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, they think that we've done a great job as a parent. Well, you haven't. You know, you've got to spend time with children. Your children. Bringing, yeah, so bringing children you, you into know, marriage, doing, Imam doing, Adil. doing, and and children bring the husband and wife together. I would certainly say that our love has increased since we had Isa. Uh, I would Guys, I, I want to put a disclaimer in here. You another know, this one. happened twice now, right? Another one. This guy, Afazah said, DD, my brother, he is known. Known. No, I'm going to go. No, he's known for visiting the bog every other hour. I've got IBS, irritable bowel. I actually have. He has IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. IBS. IBS, yeah. That can be translated in a different way. I won't share it on the podcast. Khair. Is this one of those like movie moments, you know, when... No. Shall we wrap it up? What for? Uh, because... Uh, You're tired? No, no, it's just... But no, no, Imam Adil, I think, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's important. And let's, let's just elaborate. I mean, the, the last part of the discussion we're coming to, I mean, is, is actually the, the children aspect of it. Yeah. You're a father. Mashallah, two daughters. You know, who, who's their favorite uncle? <laughs> Nobody's here quickly. Well, it depends on who gets there first. No, no, that day Mustafa came first, so Aiza is very clever. So she goes, Faz, my favorite. Mum was there, obviously, asking and, uh, you know, egging her on. And then Afiz Asad walked in, who's your favorite? Chacha Didi. And then, obviously, you walked in half an hour later. And then, as soon as she uh, sees you, then it's obviously. Uh, Takes the number later, Jana. Uh, you take the number. And Rika B as well. Uh, Rifka, obviously, she's young. She's just turned nine months. Yeah. Uh, Rifka, obviously. Uh, uh, beautiful. Named after Sayyidina Ishaq Ali Salam's wife. People uh, don't know the name Rifqa or Rifqa. Uh, when uh, we went for the first time to uh, Masjid Ibrahimi 2018 with Asad, who we mentioned earlier, Bolton, Dr. Kamran, Wajid Saab, and uh, obviously Ibrahim Pav, uh, who was on episode four, uh, the Diego Maradona episode. Diego so we went himself. in uh, 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 the last Ashara of Ramadan and we went there and made niyat and intention, Ya Allah, if you bless me with the daughter again, I'm going to name her Rifqa uh, from the root words Rafaqa Yarfuku, which mean uh, generous and kind and male equivalent of that name is Rafiq. So obviously I gave Mum full exclusive rights to name the first daughter. Yep. Dad was still alive then yep. and uh, Isa's nanny was alive. Um, they both passed away within the first year of Isa's life. And uh, Rifka, mashallah, a miracle uh, in her own right. Uh, lockdown yep. baby, born a couple of days before national lockdown, the first one. Okay. Um, 19th of March. And um, Alhamdulillah, the greatest gift after Dawlat Iman and Sahihul Aqida is the gift of children. Uh, wallahi. And that obviously comes in turn because of the gift of marriage. Uh, and Allah Almighty Jalla wa ala, uh, blesses uh, uh, you know, the marriage, uh, the couple uh, with uh, children. And children essentially bring husband and wife closer together. Uh, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu himself had seven children, three sons and four daughters. Mm. Six of them, seven children, we say the Khatijatul. Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha. And this is why when uh, Sayyidina Aisha would say uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would 
uh, express his love more for Khatija than any other of the Azwaj Mutaharat. And you know, one wisdom behind that is because they had six children together. You know, and uh, uh, you know that was the great love and relationship that they had. Uh, and we make dua that Allah Almighty bless all of our children uh, with dawlat iman and with the, uh, the you know the uh, ability to remain firm upon the sirat mustaqim It is difficult. You know, she's three now. We're having conversations about a school. We're having conversation about uh, you know uh, my ambition, dream is to make a hafiza. Something that obviously we tried, we didn't really succeed in. Inshallah, uh, you know, why not? Hafiza, she's first, got a lot of, uh, you know, we'll be the first female in our definitely family in our family. Uh, Hafiza. So that's my dream. That's my ambition with uh, with both of them. Uh, you know, and uh, it's all about environment. You know, I'm blessed in the sense that Mrs. obviously teaches at the madrasa. So I just spent eighteen months or so coming to the madrasa. In that that way to get back in because of COVID. Yeah, and yeah. That mahal, that environment has a huge impact. You know, uh, they obviously a lot into the dhikr and uh, na'ats and, you know, that kind of stuff. And then and finding that balance, you know, she, like I said earlier, she's a big Mr. Annabelle. Bean fan. Mr. Bean fan. She's watching? Well, she's Annabelle, not watching. I don't think she, she still, might still be awake. I'm not sure. Uh, but I mean, wh- why I mentioned uh, why I mentioned this and and why I said this is because um, <coughs> obviously you can't have a discussion on marriage and a podcast on marriage and not mention, you know, children, because the result of marriage is offspring. That's and one of the reasons. ربنا هبلنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة عيون وجعلنا للمتقين إماما. You know, and we we make this dua uh, uh, for righteous and pious offspring and. You know, we make this dua, and an offspring is mentioned in the Quran. You know, we're going through the the, the festive period, if I can say, in December. For Christians around the world, this is the Christmas period. They believe that the Prophet Jesus was born in this time, not necessarily Muslims. We, you know, if anything, is, you know, it's even proven to be a pagan festival, and wishing Merry Christmas and stuff is not permitted in Islam. Um, on the occasion of others. Um, uh, what do you call it? Festivals, uh, f- uh, festivals, and 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 days of uh, Eid or celebration, you can say. But without going too much into that aspect, and and we all, this everyone knows, this is our view, and this is what needs to be taught to the people. Um, but not just that. Say L- that, say that, Maryam. LGBT Q issue. Yeah, you know, huge tomorrow. problem for our children. I'm just gonna mention, like, finish that point of that. You know. Offspring, the Quran is mentioned. Mm. Sina Yaqub and his sons, Sina Zakaria and Sina Yahya, Luqman and Sayyidina his Ith- sons, Sina uh, Sina uh, Maryam and uh, Sina Isa alayhi salam, and and may Allah, you know, alayhi salam, all of them, and and you know, Sina Musa and Sina Harun siblings, mm. Sina Ismail and Ishaq sons of Sina Ibrahim, you know, Abil and Kabil sons of Sina Adam, Luqman so and his son. Siblings is a big part of mm. uh, offspring. Children are a big part of life. You know, this is how the world's moving on. Someone is the son of someone is the son of someone is the son of. This is life. This is the world. This is the way Allah created human and the human race to expand was to through this means of, you know, this pure act of intimacy between a husband and wife, and this is how it's preserved. And this is we have to understand that it's. A, it's it's rewarding to do that with your wife. There's edger in this. It's not a, a, a something bad, but the very same thing done outside of marriage, mm. or a, with someone who's not lawful and legal to you is despised. Yeah. So you can do it right or you can do it wrong way. Halal or haram. Halal or haram, and 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 the, the We've shown them. We've shown them two paths. Yeah, take one, and you know may Allah allow us to take the halal path and and, and the right way, but. We see that, you know, um, you know, offspring is a huge part and you just, you know, touched in a bit about your children here and, you know, children are a blessing. Yeah, huge blessing. A huge blessing. And, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had four Sallam daughters, Allah three Allah. sons. All of them passed away uh, before or during their lifetime. Illa Sayyidatuna, Sayyidatuna Fatima, Fatima radiallahu anha. You know, Sayyidatuna Fatima. She she passed away six months after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She was the most beloved to Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. They loved her the most. Sida Ruqayya, Sida Umm Kulsum, Sida um, Sida Zainab. They were the daughters that had passed away during their lifetime. 
and their sons, Sayyiduna Qasim, the eldest, then Sayyiduna uh, Abdullah, uh, who is also known as Sayyiduna Tayyib and Tahir, and also Sayyiduna Ibrahim. So these were the children of the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam and Nabi Salatu Salam actually encouraged Tanakahu wa Tanasalu get married and have children. For I hope that on the day of Qiyamah my Ummah will be the largest Ummah. Ummah in numbers, largest in terms of believers, largest in terms of uh, population. And the Muslim population is growing. It is said that by 2050 Imam Adil in Bradford we will be the largest population. Asian community, Muslims. What's right the now, there are 535,000 uh, inhabitants. That's the population of Bradford. Of which, we are 125,000. Meaning, 20% to 25% of the population of Bradford is Asian Muslim. Well, that's why they call it Bradistan, mini Pakistan. Mini, and Asian, so that, that's Bangladeshis that live here, that's mm. uh, those from the northwestern frontier. You know, the Pukhtun families and, 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 and Patans GG, that are here. And the also point. the Indian and, and the also the Pakistani, the Gujarati. So all of us, we are a huge part of Bradford. Bradford has a huge population of multiculturalism. And by 2050, we will be the, the biggest. And it will be, a, you know, the population of Bradford will soon be... One well, you got till 11.45, then my dessert's coming, so... Right, okay, so... so Disclaimer. What, what I'm saying, Imam Adil, is that we need to... Um, you know, it's we need to we one. need to have you know, and our first sub's got no children yet. Obviously, he's just been married a week. Uh, <laughs> two weeks. But inshallah, may Allah two weeks today. May Allah Almighty yes. bless him with children. Amen. You know, Ameen. he's gonna be a father soon. We're hoping he'll give us good news. You never know. But uh, inshallah, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> she goes to me. I can't imagine you being a dad today. Allah. Why? She said that to you. Yeah, she goes. I can't imagine you. And he let her. She goes. You, you mess about, don't you? Not everyone's <laughs> like Imam Adil. No, the, I, I think there's there's stages in life, you know, uh, you, know you you grow out of that phase or you grow out of that stage when you get married. That's the first stage. Uh, and I remember Kibla Bizar was saying it once. Uh, they said that there's three stages in life. If you don't change at them points, then you're never going to change. Mm. The first one is marriage. Second one is parenthood. And third one, if I'm not misquoting, is when you become a grandfather or a grandparent, if you reach that stage. Uh, and that's the reality, you know, and, and he's obviously crossed the stage one. Um, and I will say this, maturity absolutely. isn't about being serious all the time. It's about being serious at the right times. Ooh. I've well always, said. I've always maintained that maturity. Well, I think uh, you had to go away and research that on your toilet break. I, I promise you. Possibly. I promise you. What, what's wrong with you? Why, why, why are you making it? It's been my mature since Jamial Karim. Some, uh, I learned it there. Some, I think it's other side. I'm, I'm Maybe keep the Bakhtiyar side. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It might be, you know. Me and Zen used to there. sit with them a lot. You know, what a guy, man. Zen's best mate. mate. The best well, mate I've ever heard, right? Knowledge. I'm not going to say anything. The best I miss Jamia days, you know, man. I'm going to be open. I'll tell, tell you straight. I miss Kibla Please ask Go, go. Who's stopping you yeah, from you not should, going? You know. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't open it up here. People think, you know, again, hearsay stories, all the nonsense that you write about me and you've heard. It's nothing like that. Absolutely nothing. You don't know the real truth. Let's be honest. And, and you know, there's certain truths that I, I can share with you that you'd be shocked about as well. Not in a bad way, in a Look, very if, good way. if life. you have differences you, even between brothers, that doesn't mean you lose that respect. Never. Mm. Differences of opinion Nobody uh, will is hold a that valid position. thing. Ikh- Amongst my teachers, the way Kibla in your life, in Ikhtilaful ummati rahmatun. What they've done for me. They've influenced in every way. You, uh, someone edit this clip and send it to them. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you straight. <laughs> okay. you no, know, there's 200 people watching. To do after no, you should no, no, Jawad doesn't do edit clips. He's not into that. That's not part of his contract. I'm <laughs> sure it was. We're trying to get it into part of his contract. <laughs> what is his contract? No, no, please don't. Jawad has a key role. I'm not aware. Mashallah, Jawad's a married man. Wait a second. I've not know, said anything wrong against Jawad. I, I'm the one who actually fights. Jawad, you want to come into now. the picture? You want to put your face in? Uh, I'm the one who fights his battles for him. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the one about wages. <laughs> <laughs> That's all these guys ever go at me for, man. Uh, you fight yeah. everyone's ever battle for that one, Imam Adil. I'll tell you what, you know, Jabba when Imam Adil's tired, <laughs> he's firing. If Jabba, if you're listening, you're definitely swearing see, at this game. The both of them get their phones out and, and you know, I get Yeah, because we're married men, yaar. Well, are you texting your wife? Me, Eyes and Rifka were awake and now I'm just finding out if they've gone to sleep. Mrs. was obviously saying that she wants to get a dessert tonight. May I tell you, chica? Perks of living alone. <laughs> nice, isn't it? Uh, <sighs> Nice. I love it. 
Tell you what, you know, we forget keeping up with the Kardashians. You can do one on your mama. I'll tell you what, Allah ka shukr. Yaqeenan, we are not worthy of any of these blessings. Obviously, NBA tonight as well. We are not worthy of any of these blessings. These are obviously the du'as of our grandfather. This is the fadl and karam of Allah. Uh, it is from his infinite mercy and bounty of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alayhi salatu wasalam. On deta hai dene ko mu chahiye. Dene wala hai sacha. On deta hai dene ko mu chahiye. Dene wala hai sacha. Hamara nabi. And, 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 and I was just saying, you obviously start from the top, but आज ले उनकी पना आज मदद मांग उनसे फिर न माने ये वज़ाव दादा जी इस दुआ अल्लाह अल्माइटी कीप दा दुआ कायम दायम अपन इस एंड यू नो अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह दीज़ आर ब्लेसिंग्स यू नो आई वाज़ फॉर्च्यूनर दैट डैड सॉ माय वेडिंग ही सॉ ऑब्वियसली आइज़र या दीज़ आर ब्लेसिंग्स दैट यू नो य it so happened that was life, but yeah, and it's a, you know, it's a privilege you've and if your parents are still alive, and you're, you're, you're at that age where you can get married, don't delay. Give them that right. Give them the happiness. Some parents die heartbroken because they've not seen their children get married. I'm speaking generally. Mm. Yeah, I hope you're not talking about that. You know, I don't think dad died. No, why, why do you always bring everything back onto yourself? Man? I don't know, man. It's I've, I've, I've realized something it? that you're very insecure. Oh, you know, how did you know that, man? A you're very, in- hey, Javad, we were touching upon this yesterday. Very I insecure. Am, you know, I've been broken now, man. Oh, yeah? You know, I was never, you know, 10 years ago, man, you know, five years ago, I was ruthless. You, you know, I'm I didn't care, again. but I've become very, and I, I, it's my struggle, it's my own battle, man. Maybe I need someone in life who I can. Who can give me? I, I tell you what. I tell you. I'm not gonna lie. As well, I feel so much security around Mum now. Mum is my rock. I, I've actually realized that. You know, she's a big part. You know, and I don't care if I get married or not. As long as I got Mum there with me and that, and, you know, it's a big part, man. You know, you guys are happy and good. And for me, Mum is uh, Mum is everything for me, man. Trust me. Uh, the speech of mothers, she's made me, man. You know, after Allah is Rasul alayhi salatu salam is my mother, and then. You know, Pizza Asab and everyone else comes. I tell you, my mom's done. And dad as well. Dad was obviously my best friend. You know, I, I used to have heart-to-hearts with dad. And there were things on a level me and dad used to talk about. And but yeah, yeah, I am insecure. And what Imam Adil? Shukra, he's not on these podcasts. <laughs> insecure. <laughs> no, no, Mr. Bajaj just text me. No, oh, yeah, you know. Oh. He goes, what's going on with Aymer? <laughs> This is what I mean, man. They just they bully me. Everyone bullies me, man. I've been bullied all my life, you know. I'm, I'm oh a big boy. He's putting a hashtag God. out. Find Aymer a wife. It's Booj. Oh, forget uh, it, man. It's pa- is that his account? Is that what I'm saying? Is that what I'm saying? He came on live last night about 2 in the morning. Dean and Dunya fan page. You should be in that. I thought, eh? Booj. I thought, how you landed there? And then I just cut him off. Well, in Rotherham. I don't know if he was in Rotherham or he was in... It's Booj, right? He had a go at him two weeks ago at your... He's going everywhere in this booge, isn't it? <laughs> Zen's brother, by the way. We might get him on a podcast one day, me. I don't Did think he's more ruthless he's, he's than ruthless. I am. He's ruthless. He's, 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 he's a real ruthless. Mike Tyson, you know. Uh, this guy is just black and white. He just don't know what to say, when to say, how to say. But he'll beat you up. He will beat you up. And he's always up for a scrap, so. He'll just beat you up. He'll, he'll always fight you. But he's one of our brothers as well, you know, close. Zen's brother, you Allah know. Allah. But you know, Allah. Alhamdulillah, it's been an absolutely fantastic podcast, I think. Three Honestly, days, I think. Touched uh, on some seriously. I mean, the first one's got 5,000 views. You know, young Simba's got his uh, 15 minutes of fame. A bit before more. Musafa came on. Musafa? Mufasa. Mufasa. Yeah, I'll I do it again, man. I was who's that other one? Mufasa. Scar. Scar. He's the uncle. <laughs> <laughs> I know. See, I know my mom, I don't know what crossed his mind here. You know, yeah. I know he's my brother. I know the thoughts. Chaudhary Savia Jain, mashallah, blessed us with their presence. I don't know how many people are here. It's not a marriage. It's not a marriage. It's not a marriage. Single. But no, it's been honestly a pleasure. And I hope people have obviously enjoyed the podcast, but they've learned a lot. And again, it, it was virtually impossible to cover every aspect. It is. Uh, and you know what we've covered is again what we your mentioned. Your scenarios before. are specific to you and circumstantial. Circumstantial. It was just a general discussion over the festive period. Well, we uh, thought we holiday these season. Taboos and bring them out. Uh, you know, one of our good friends, Ifti Iftikha, you know, a good mate of mine. Uh, you know, he's a practicing barrister, solicitor, lawyer, and you know, he's very educated, very well. And he was he was he was complimenting the good work we did yesterday, uh, and he's most likely watching this as well today. And I want to get him on to be honest, man. He's he's a uh, 
well spoken, well written, well articulate, you know, very, very <coughs> mature guy. I mean, bear in mind that nobody on here yet has been over the age of 35. True. You know, and well, it'd be one good brother to bring from Rochdale, Muazzam, uh, his well, uh, message, uh, giving good, uh, you know, words and complimenting the work that we're doing. And then he said, can you upload these podcasts onto SoundCloud, is it? Yeah, we can do that. We can do we can do all of that. Inshallah, we'll, we, you know what? We're working on that. That is uh, Jawad's forte. And I do need to have a conversation with him with regards to actually pushing that out. But season one is coming up to a close. Next week will be the final episode where we do a recap of 2020. And that is obviously, the, uh, you know, we've, we've been a very, very sad, difficult year for everyone. Every single one. Uh, some have thrived in terms of business. Others have lost everything. People have had children in this time. People have lost a lot of people in this time. But next week, inshallah, we'll dedicate uh, a podcast to 2020. Those who He's have died. He's been messaging me non-stop since yesterday. Haji Daoud. Haji Daoud is saying, I love you. He messaged me. He goes, I've got your back. I said, look, I love you, kid. You're, you're my little brother. You know, I've got a love, love and time for you. But please, stop spamming the podcast all the time like this. He I mean, might get it wrong again. Yeah. I, I'm only messing, Daoud. You know, I'm always having a laugh and joke with my close friends and people. So, yeah, it's been great. Honestly, honestly, Imam Adil, honestly and honestly, I'm hungry as well. You've, you've done a fantastic job. Thank you. And I much. hope that guys who are watching, please subscribe. Please share this. Let's get this out, man. Let's get this growing. You know, we've got plans uh, to have, uh, you know, spin-offs for Afaz Asad who wants to go more into sports and general discussions for himself. Uh, possibly on the Let's Talk With I'm a uh, platform or something he wants to grow and, 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 and build himself. Um, at the same time, Imam Adil as well, you know, we're looking at getting religious podcasts on sure for him more. where, you know, it's more... F and myself, you know, me in more in the professional light. And let me tell you this, a person can be professional on stage and then be normal and human at home. <coughs> you know, everyone has this expectation that you're an imam, you've got to have the same image behind closed doors as in front of closed doors. Not necessarily... You know, there's aspects of the Prophet Sallallahu personal private life that Sayyidina Aisha allowed us to know that the companions didn't know. And, and this is something, it's, it's just human nature. We, on the public platform, we are imams. We do have an image. We do have <coughs> a, 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 a responsibility. We do have, you know, certain requirements and standards by which we have to follow, of course. And we can fall short in that way, human. It reminds me of a, a statement uh, Amir Mujahideen would say in their bayans about the mother that ah. to give Molvi You know, when they would do a slight delay on their salah. And that right only lies with the mother. And, and there's a very beautiful bayan that they, uh, you know, delve into all of that. Rahmatullahi ta'ala, they Allah Almighty raised their darajat in the akhirah. And uh, the Khatme Chalam is coming this week. And uh, reality is that you know we're humans at the end of the day uh, you know what you see in the public domain is not going to be the same behind closed doors you know uh, where, as you probably realize the brothers and sisters are watching we're very very close to our mother uh, she's the glue that keeps us together Allah gave her a long and healthy life you know we were very close to our father as well and now obviously as we're branching off you know two of us married one of us with kids and, and that's the cycle of life that's how things happen and things move on we've got nothing against anyone you know uh, Allah, uh, nothing man you know we Whatever have happens, uh, no uh, you know uh, uh, hatred against anyone we respect all uh, uh, people but on one condition my condition which is that they have to be of sahih al aqidah bas mm. if they are of sahih al aqidah they are the crowns on our heads be that a peer be that a faqir be that somebody who uh, yani is off the streets or somebody who uh, is on and the And I'll tell you something, you know? and I honestly believe, you know, over over these years and stuff and through what we've read and stuff, and this dua I used to make, but I never really understood. Allahumma la mani ali ma a'atayta wa la mu'ti ali ma mana. Simple. You have nothing to fear. What is for you and written for you will come to you. Nobody can take that. And what is not written for you, it's not going to come to you. So stop stressing. And I'm talking, when we say insecurities, okay, difficulties, personal journey, those things have happened and that, you do get insecure. Mm. You do feel like maybe you found the right person you're going to marry and don't work out. Or maybe you're going in the right direction. Things You do get, you do come across hurdles in life. I'm no different. Nobody's different. Everyone watching has that. But what I will believe and I will say, I don't care what anyone thinks what they say. You cannot harm me if Allah doesn't allow you to harm me. Mm. 
You cannot benefit me if Allah doesn't allow you to benefit me. And if you have that mentality, then you're all right. What have you got to worry about, man? Your faith and trust in Allah has to be strong. And I believe that our faith in and trust in Allah is strong. 2020 has certainly taught us that. It has to teach you that. There's nothing mm -hmm. else. Nothing is guaranteed. Death is promised. And only thing guaranteed is what Allah has written for you. What is your sustenance written, you will get. Not a day later, not a day earlier. It's going to come to you. That doesn't mean that you remain idle. It means you strive. <clears throat> you strive in the best way possible to get what you need to get to get to where you need to be. Maybe that is written for you to get to where you need to be. So don't stress, don't worry, don't be depressed, don't be anxious. None of these things. You know, be positive. Look at out, you know, things in, in, in a positive manner. And, and to conclude, we make dua and ask Allah that He blesses those who have no spouses with righteous spouses. Uh, those no, I mean. who are married, may they have prosperous marriages. I mean. Those who have children within marriage, may they be worthy of bringing their children up in the best way possible. I mean. Those who have no children, may Allah bless them with righteous offspring will become the, the coolness to their eyes. And ultimately, those who are struggling and suffering within marriage, may Allah Almighty, يَجْعَلْ لَهُمْ مَخْرَجَ May Allah make an exit for them. Make what's best for them. Uh, and my final closing words is that those who are struggling, you're not alone. You know, you can not, reach out to you're us. You're not alone. You can reach out to ulama in your community, in your vicinity, and just speak to them and, and you know, gain guidance, gain some support. Uh, and, and, you know, du'as, du'as are very powerful. Uh, ibadah, uh, the essence of worship, silahul mu'min, the weapon of the believer. I think a lot of people use that, Imam Adil. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we always just brush things off with, make dua, Karsan, nobody, I'll make dua for you. Mm. Dua is easy. We all make dua. But, you know, for إِذَا azamta, Allah. First, you try, you do your utmost everything. Guy comes, oh, Imam Asim, I've got an exam. You know, I want to pass my A-levels, I want to pass my degree, this, that. Do dua on that. I mean, the first thing I'm going to say to you is, have you tried your best? Mm. Are you revising? Have you done what you need to do? Have you put your effort in? Yes? May Allah Almighty make you successful. I mean, your results will show, it will reflect. Mm. So you do your bit. Do what you need to do. Tie the camel. Then rely on Allah. Rely and, t and, and, and do this and... And we make dua. Yes, I'm not knocking Imam Adil saying we do make dua. We should make dua generally. But work to Allah positively, Allah. constructively, objectively to make things work within your families, within your homes. I hope parents are understanding with children. Children are understanding with parents. And inshallah, maybe sometime in the future we can revisit this topic and add some more, shed definitely, some more light on this. Definitely. Not maybe over three podcasts, but generally. And if you've got any good, interesting topics, please inbox me. Uh, and, and you're going to share the poll we'll end on this yeah oh man it might take we'll be waiting you know I've care. got one minute I don't care about things like that let me let me just as you the said best I'm, was, insecure, I'm the most secure I'm who is your favourite podcaster I'm not insecure in regards to like you know that I, know I, mean, I don't really need to you know go on I mean? go on get to the point uh, man. who is your favourite podcaster Aima, Didi, Imam Adil or Was the four main people in this uh, series yeah <laughs> so so let me see. You're going to take a pen, a paper. Someone's going to do this. Right. So, Usman, Frey's brother, he said Didi. Obviously, he said me. Aman, obviously, Wait, he said Imam Adil and Was. I thought you would have written all this down. No, I haven't. A mate of mine said Aima. Another <laughs> one said Aima. Harun Shakil said Harun Shakil. He's not even <laughs> been on yet. Did. Typical. And others. Okay, so one person said Imam Adil. Have you got a pen and paper? Chodi Saab, Karanatos. We know you're. What's this one? Chodi Saab, we know you used to locking prisoners up. Yeah. So, yeah. this is prison break for you. I'm a, uh, You're the one that said it. You're the one that said it. No, this. but I thought he had actually got it all. No, he hasn't. Let's uh, go off the, let's do it off the podcast then. Uh, line up, Marido. Okay. Five, then you do that line, yeah? Oh, by the way, those who are watching now live as well, you can vote as well. They've said it. Imam Madil, all three, alhamdulillah. Yes, yeah, so send it through. And yeah, we, yeah. we won't include that in the vote. We'll do that after. Joke and uh, screenshot. Imam so, Adil. Yeah. Right, Didi. A lot of my students, uh, mashallah. Imam Adil Anwas. Aymer and Didi. Right. Aymer. Imam Adil. Aymer. Harun Shakil, forget. Imam Adil. Imam Adil. Go on, Imam Adil. Aymer. 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 
Imam Adil. Imam Adil. Imam Adil. Imam Adil. Imam Adil. Imam Imam Adil. Imam Imam Adil. Imam Adil. Imam Adil. Imam Adil. Imam Adil. Imam Adil. Imam Imam Adil. Imam Adil. Imam Imam Adil. Imam Imam Adil. 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 Imam Imam Adil. Imam Imam Okay, Defo Didi, man, the guy's bare underrated. Okay, Imam Adil. Didi. Uh, someone said, could you refrain from using uh, mobile phones as this distracts? Uh, was. To all those Mustafa. Listening. I still haven't Not got my... Bo- Aima. Imam Adil. He's all three brothers are amazing. It's good. Wait a second. Did Mustafa work for himself? No, no, somebody oh, else. Right. He's got fun, I think. I'm a son of Mustafa, man. Imam Adil. Imam Adil. Imam Adil. I'm a. Somebody goes, can we have Imam a Imam Adil. <laughs> Not on a party. I'm a and Didi. Hmm? Mustafa's message. How did I get it? Imam about? Adil. Imam Adil. What the hell? Uh, Chalo, we've got to the end of it. We've got what Imam no, Adil no, did. No, no, uh, Imam oh, Adil. Right. <laughs> uh, Imam Adil. Uh, I'm a was Imam Adil Didi. Wait. After yesterday's Imam Adil seen this other side. So Imam Adil. I'm a. So Mashallah, dear beloved right. Uncle Abid is watching. Brother uh, Tanzim from Imam London. Adil. Brother Shazad from Blackburn. I'm an Imam Adil. These brothers. I'm a. I'm a. Was an I'm a. Didi, Imam Adil, Aime, uh, all of you, but my favorite is Aime, Didi. To all of you out there, you haven't even seen me yet. Aime, uh, well, Imam Adil. Is it true, isn't it? Aime by Yamayel. Who's uh, Aime? Has to be Aime, Didi. Is tops class two, both genuine and real. Can you do a podcast on uh, t- uh, Imam Adil? Ali Akbar Nasir. Didi, Imam Adil. What? Didi, my guy. Didi. There you, Didi. Go. there you go for Didi. Didi. There you go for her. Didi. There you go for her. Imam Adil. Uh, I'm a. And Imam Adil. Imam Adil. This guy says by a mile. Um, so one person goes, has anyone said Imam Adil yet? So I'm not shared it, but it's Imam all there. Imam Adil, I think out. I just come on the chat. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The legend, the myth, Imam Adil. Says, That's definitely your daughter. No, no. I'm a. Uh, get Suli on, uh, you know. Uh, you Imam Saab, I've listened to your speeches many times. Truly inspiration. Okay, my I'm Asha, we love all the brothers and sisters out only, there. Only uh, the one and only I'm a part. Didi Was Huzaifa Iqbal, Imam Asim, number one fan. Yes, oh, G- girl, eh? Imam Adil. <laughs> we know you're number one. Likira Maruna, Choi Saab, I'm a Chodri Saab, I'm a Takiya. I'm a how long is this? Imam Adil, Imam Adil, Imam Adil. I'm a, I'm a, Imam Adil, Didi, Didi, two times there, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, Imam Adil. Muhammad so just Yusuf, stop. I'm going to be honest, I voted twice for him. Allah, here we go, corruption in voting. Donald yeah. Trump All of you bring right something here. unique to the table. <laughs> he goes. Fabulous Ford. Didi by far, this is Nenny Insta, so obviously Didi's boys here. No, Nenny. who's Nenny Insta? I don't even know him. Yeah. Didi by far, keep him as co-host for every podcast. There you go. I didn't even Imam know Adil, before. please be careful video. tonight. Storm Bella, you know, I'm rapper a, warm. You're too licking, eh? I'm a... <laughs> Sajid Ahmed, I'm was, a, it would have been Didi waiting to turn up today, still sleeping. Didi. My guy. Uh, Didi. Who's ringing? Imam now? Adil. Didi. I'm a... I'm a... I'm a... I'm a... I'm a Didi. I'm a Was and Didi. I'm a... So he said, you didn't even put Wasmi down. Ings uh, way. Yes, oh, you follow so it around. Was, was, was I think Was got one. It'll be on the left. Four, five, six, seven votes. Bra- it's, yeah, it's, it's a black was, was got seven votes. Brown door. It is dessert. It's come on the podcast. Yeah. You know what you're doing, man? You're on my podcast, <laughs> yeah. man. How unprofessional is this guy's <laughs> work? He's going to podcast. What the hell, man? It's a podcast. I let yeah. my yeah. missus yeah. know. Tika. Right, so okay. Was got seven. Did you got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25? Uh-huh. Imam Adil got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 32. Beat me by only 7 in Imam Adil. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Yeah, there's one it gone. He's won it. About 36. Me, I'd, I've lost. Uh, what I was 25, say? you were 32, and I'm his 36. 
By four vo- uh, No, no, I want to recount. What do you need to recount? See, I told you, Donald Trump, you beat me by no, seven. No, but all the people on YouTube, they're voting me. Were they? We have, an, uh, have we put YouTube? No, I've not put YouTube. Yeah, this put is YouTube. just my, uh, uh, on my Instagram, obviously. Oh, he's counted. Look at what. And the winner is, okay, go on, I'll tell you what, this is going to be political. Jawadi bad just for money there. Jawadi on my guy. Oh, I forgot uh, that. Yeah. Right, guys. Everyone, that, yeah. everyone is selfish. Guys, thank you very much. Uh, clearly, uh, for now, for season one, I've been the best. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so season two, we will start again. And Allah bless you all. The next uh, podcast will be, inshallah, possibly Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night. Share, subscribe, like, get it out. Uh, Allah bless you. Please forgive us if you've said anything wrong, anything offensive. Uh, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.